right? Let's see. It says it says it's live right now. I'm not sure if it is or not. So in chat, let me know when you start seeing this, and I'll know that I'm live. Assuming that I am, uh, it is true. I'm a Mac user. I've used a Mac since 20, 23 years ago, something like that. Um, the first computer I ever had was a 386. Uh, I upgraded it to a 486, and um, it's been a really long time since the last time that I built a computer. Um, hopefully, yeah, so people are seeing me. Um, this case and this monitor I actually bought as part of the last video. You can go check that out on my channel later, uh, where I built a pretty over-the-top, ridiculous Raspberry Pi gaming PC. Obviously, Raspberry Pi is not going to be a high-end gaming PC. You're gonna, not going to play any AAA games on it, except through maybe um, whatever that Steam, Steam Link or something like that. Um, but anyway, I had those parts, and I also had this AMD graphics card, and I was like, oh, well, why don't we build an actual computer out of this so that I can do things like compile the Linux kernel faster? Um, so that's my plan for today. Now, the, the last few times I bought computers, uh, right now I have a MacBook Air, I have a Mac Mini, and I have a video from last year talking about how I set those up using Ansible and all that. Uh, the last few times I bought a computer, it's been like this. Let me show you my screen here. Uh, you basically go in and you customize your computer on Apple. You choose how much RAM you want. Uh, you choose your SSD storage and you know, any other options. There's usually two or three options. Maybe for a Mac Pro you get more than that, but that's about what it is. You, you add it to your bag, and then if a week or two later it, it pops in the mailbox, and you have a fully functional computer. Now, uh, I have not, uh, I haven't built a PC in a very long time. I've watched other channels where they, they build PCs, and so I know kind of the basics of it, and it hasn't really changed much in 20-something years. Um, the, the 3D6 I had had a motherboard, it had RAM, I think I had 8 megabytes by the time I was finished with that one. Uh, it had ISA cards, which you had to set IRQ dip switches and things. Luckily nowadays we don't have to do all that kind of stuff, but it had all the basic components. There's a power supply, a hard drive, I think I started out with a 20 megabyte hard drive, IDE, I think. Yeah, that one didn't have SCSI. My, uh, my old Mac had SCSI on it. Um, so it had all these different parts. So it's not like this is rocket science. It's not some new thing under the sun. The biggest difference that I see is, uh, actually, if, if you think about it, go subscribe to the second channel, Gearling Engineering. Uh, there's a link to it in the description. Uh, in the first video that my dad and I posted on that channel, we actually uh, put a Pi KVM into a PC at his radio station. And that PC is a cheaper PC that has, doesn't have all the features that a modern case like this one does. Uh, with cable management on the back side, and this, I guess they call this the basement, the, the area where you hide all the power cables and things. And of course it didn't have things like RGB fans and RGB lighting and all this crazy stuff that they have nowadays. But that's the last time that I built one. So I think it'll be fun to build one today. Now to give you a little extra context, um, yes, this is live, someone asks on there. Um, I, I actually am supposed to be able to follow the chat a little bit easier, but right now it's a little bit tough for me because this is, this is my workshop. I, it's, not, uh, it's not a streaming setup. This is a working workshop, not a streaming workshop like you see many YouTubers have with their fancy tools arranged in just nice ways. Uh, but to give you context, this was state-of-the-art last time that I built a computer. This was the Apple Airport base station. This one still works, although there's something inside of it rattling around. So I don't know how, how much longer this will work. It's also missing the little top part of the Apple logo, uh, but it's been a while. So uh, I figure let's get started on this and um, let me move some things off of here so I have room. Oh, and today I also have set up, after my video last week, a lot of people were complaining like, oh, it's so hard to see inside that computer case and everything's so dark. So I put more lights in. I have another camera angle here that uh, I have a light in the computer, so you'll be able to see what we're doing here. Hopefully that'll be fun. I don't have anybody helping me. Uh, that's, this channel is not big enough to have like full-time help for cameras and things. So I'm doing this all on my own, so bear with me as we get through this. Uh, one to two hours. I'm guessing that's how long this is gonna take. <laughs> you can put your bets on how long this uh, this will take and, and whether or not I'll have a su successful post at the end. Um, 
You might notice if you looked at the parts list in the description, there are some things like the keyboard and mouse. This is just because I had this from last week. This is not a good, this is a bad gaming keyboard. You would not want to play competitive gaming with a Raspberry Pi keyboard. But I had them on hand. They're in their boxes, and that looks cooler to have a box sitting here than a keyboard that's like has its cable hanging out. So that's the reason I'm using these. When I actually play real games, I use a better keyboard and mouse. But those are somewhere else in the house right now, and I didn't want to unplug them and get them out here. Uh, but I did need a good motherboard. And let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, and for people speculating, I know a couple people were asking, what are you going to load on this thing? Not Windows. Uh, I, I know uh, LTT had a series on uh, gaming on Linux. I'm going to run Ubuntu 2004 on it. Uh, so I have that on this USB here. That's another funny thing. It, this is apparently now a USB. More people th seem to call these USBs. I called them flash drives, but you could also call them thumb drive or I don't know, USB key. But uh, yeah, I have Ubuntu on this USB. We're going to load that on there in a little bit. Uh, but for a motherboard, I, I don't care too much about my motherboard stuff, um, like options and things. The main thing I wanted was PCI Express 4. Uh, Gen 4, because I do a lot of testing on Raspberry Pis with different PCI Express devices, and uh, the Pi has PCI Express Gen 2, so 4 is double 2, so that's pretty cool. But um, the nice thing is I, I've often wanted to do some comparisons of if I put something that's a PCI uh, Gen 4 by 1 into a Gen 4 slot and see the bandwidth that I can get, real-world bandwidth, uh, versus the, the Raspberry Pis Gen 2 by 1 slot. Uh, so, so, so some, some things like that I'll be testing. Um, that should be fun. Uh, but I got this B550 uh, Aorus Elite. This is not LTT. I don't know everything about all the specs on all these things. All I know is, let's see. Basically, you need a motherboard that's going to hold everything in the system together. So you don't want to cheap out on it, but you also don't need something that's exotic and insane because typically you want to dedicate those resources to something that's a little nicer. Um, let me switch cameras here so you can see this a little better. Uh, this board, I can't see what it looks like. Let's see, here we go. Uh, this board has a socket for the CPU, so that's kind of important. Uh, but it, it, this board is, uh, I, I've heard it called a, a gaming motherboard, so I don't know. I mean. A motherboard needs to hold things and it needs to route the right signals to the right places. So I don't care whether it's called gaming or server or whatever. The biggest differences are sometimes there's eight RAM slots instead of four for certain CPUs. Uh, there's better, better or worse cooling on these VRMs, the, the power circuits that get power to the CPU. Uh, there's, there's more or fewer M.2 slots. This board that looks like has two. I didn't really care. I just need one for now, but having an extra one's nice. Uh, but one big thing about all these motherboards is uh, the the processor that I chose, an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't say it on, well, there's the processor. You can't probably read it on the stream, uh, but we'll get that out later. Uh, that processor has PCI Express Gen 4, but the way that this motherboard is set up, only these two parts of the board go direct to the processor's Gen 4. The rest of it goes through this bridge uh, into these three slots. I think this one's like by four, and this one's by one and by one electrically. Yeah, physically, it's a by 16. Uh, but that means that if we wanted to put a high bandwidth card anywhere, it has to be in this first slot. It has by 16 PCI Express Gen 4. And this guy has Gen 4 by two or by four. I don't remember. Uh, it doesn't matter too much on this because the Rocket Q that I'm going to be putting in here, I think, is a PCI Gen 3 by four. So we're not going to get the full bandwidth out of this. But if I ever wanted to upgrade, that'd be nice. Uh, but anyway, other than that, it's just a motherboard. I did notice, so I bought this used uh, on eBay, mostly because I just wanted to save some money. And I've bought a lot of things on eBay. And, you know, 10% of the time it doesn't even work. Um, but most of the time it does. Uh, but I bought it used on eBay just to save money on it. Because, again, I, you know, as long as the motherboard puts the connection through the right way, it's, you know, I don't know. There are probably some bad motherboards out there, but this is not Gamers Nexus, although I do have their mod mat. It's a nice, nice little piece of kit. Um, I just needed something to hold everything together. So that was my mission with the motherboard, and that's what I have here. 
Uh, for RAM, I went with this RGB RAM. The only reason I went RGB and paid the extra 10 or 20 bucks for it is the case that I bought for the Raspberry Pi build is over the top and has three RGB fans on the front. So I figured I'm just going to go ahead and, and go the full, full nine yards and get uh, RGB RAM. And I bought this Skyeth Case Flex RGB fan on the back. It's ridiculous, but the motherboard supports it. So I was like, you know what? Why not? My, my kids will like it, if, if nothing else. They'll come downstairs and be like, oh, dad has that rainbow PC. Or, I don't know, maybe we should set up a poll. I don't know, uh, <laughs> just commit to the RGB. Uh, maybe we can set up a poll. I don't know. Uh, so my, my sister is helping moderate the stream. Um, I don't know if you can set up a poll. Ask uh, what color should we do, or should we go full rainbow and just have it go in rainbow the whole time? My plan is um, I checked with Ubuntu, and uh, pretty much any Linux, Mac, or Windows PC can run OpenRGB. So that's my plan is to run OpenRGB instead of one of these proprietary like IQ or a, a Aura. I don't know. I'm not an RGB guy. I, last, time I, last time I built a PC, well, this is a, a, a mobile module, but um, last time I built a PC, it was a RAM, RAM stick like this where there was literally RAM on a, on a PCB. Uh, an interesting thing I found out though, I was asking like, I asked this on Twitter a couple days ago. I said, let me get one of these things out. Like with RGB fans and RGB uh, lights and strip lights and things, they have these extra connectors on them. I don't know, probably can't see that too well. There's a four pin connector on it. With RAM, there's no connector, and I was like, what the heck? Like, how, how are they getting the RGB? Are they just leaching power off the RAM itself somehow? And I found out that they actually have all RAM chips, at least DDR. I don't know about what generation uh, this started. Let me switch over to my iPhone, and I can get a close-up. Sorry about the, the shelf back here, um, but let's see here. So do you see the chip right in the middle, right above those gold contacts, that little itty-bitty rectangle that's under the label? Uh, that is an EEPROM. And what's interesting is, anybody who's followed my Pi work, uh, you can see on the Raspberry Pi, just to the right of the middle, there's another chip just like that. It's vertical and it has eight pins on it. That is also an EEPROM. And uh, the EEPROM has like the early stage bootloader and, and some, some firmware in it. What I found out was, let me switch back to my other camera. You don't have to look at my, my little shelf of chemicals there. Um, with these RGB chips, they actually have kind of an expanded EEPROM and an expanded microcontroller that controls the RGB uh, through a couple pins. Well, on this one, on this one, the pins are down here, and it uses I squared C to communicate through the RAM. Uh, and usually, RAM, RAM uh, I think DDR2 or DDR3, whatever generation it was, they started using the SM bus, uh, system management bus or something. It's an Intel spec. Um, but they started using that to communicate with uh, all the peripherals on the motherboard. So when the computer boots, uh, the, the post, the, what is that, the uh, pre-operation startup test or something, uh, when it posts, what it does is it goes out to each device on every bus and says, hey, are you there? Okay, good. Are you there? Okay, good. And it gets the specs for it and all that. So when RAM does that, it uses uh, I squared C to communicate through the EEPROM to the chip and say, are you okay? What are you? What's your capabilities? How fast can you run? After all that happens, that little chip just sits there and does nothing. So these uh, manufacturers that make the RGB shields and things for these, uh, they just use that bus using, I guess, proprietary protocols to send RGB signals to these uh, lights. Now, one thing that I wasn't clear on is how they get power. Um, so that's something that I might look at in the future. It looks like, uh, looking at some people who have taken apart RGB RAM on uh, YouTube, looks like there's uh, um, uh, a little up converter on the board somewhere that takes like the 2.5 volt power that comes in and uh, boosts that up to 3.3 volts for the, the actual LEDs. Anyway, total aside, um, if, you, if you're an electronics person, that might be interesting. If you're not, then you might not care at all. But I am, so I cared. Let's see. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Yeah, it should take, I mean, I'm hoping it'll take less than an hour. I'm not doing anything exotic. I think the most annoying thing is I have this eight terabyte uh, SATA hard drive. Now, I think, I don't know if I put this in a description. This whole build is like 3,000 bucks. 
Um, but if you take out these two drives, it's like a thousand bucks. So this is way overkill, but I had these on hand. This is a spare for my NAS actually. Uh, it's always good to have a hot spare. I'm gonna use it in here for now and see, uh, see, test out a few different ways of using this PC. And I might have it be like a second backup for active projects for my NAS too. If not, I might pull this back out and have it be a cold spare again. Uh, but anyway, yeah, these are way overkill and this is the bulk of the cost of this PC is these two little guys right here. Uh, but let's, let's get started on actually building this thing. I also have uh, an RM650X power supply. I looked up, so uh, PC parts, PC parts, what is this thing called? PC, PC parts picker. Um, I mentioned earlier in the stream that, uh, you can't read this at all, but imagine PC parts picker on your, on your uh, site and that's what this is. Um, I mentioned earlier that when I buy a Mac or when I bought this PC, this is my current Windows PC that I use for quote unquote gaming. It's, it's an i3 with integrated graphics. Um, <clears throat> you basically choose your base model and then choose RAM and something like that. And then it comes. Now I would not recommend this computer. This is a S, it doesn't even have the, the model number. It's like an SPO or S, it's basically a small HP desktop. It has a proprietary motherboard, a proprietary power supply that I couldn't put into a system like this. And it has uh, half height uh, PCI Express slots, which you know is neither here nor there. Um, and it doesn't have a whole lot of expandability. So I quickly ran out of room. I upgraded the hard drive or the, uh, the NVMe SSD to a one terabyte one in here. I upgraded the, the Wi-Fi to uh, Wi-Fi 6. And I put in 10 gigabit ethernet on the back. I took that out and I'm actually gonna stick that into this build. Um, but it, you quickly run out of options. And the thing that I hate the most is if I ever wanted to switch from like this case to another case, I could pull the motherboard, pop it in another case. So having all these modular parts is cool. And that's something you don't get with a Mac for sure. Um, but anyway, so that, that was another motivation for this. Uh, but PC parts picker was really helpful in knowing that a 650 watt power supply should handle this CPU with the Radeon RX 6700 XT. But that's, I mean, the last time I built a PC, there was no PC parts picker. So awesome, awesome that we have something like that that can help you to see any potential incompatibilities and things like that nowadays. Um, I'm gonna switch to this camera and actually move the camera a little bit so you can see better, hopefully. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that'll be good. Hey, and if, if you want me to have a uh, dedicated camera person for the channel or something like that, uh, you can always support the channel on Patreon or GitHub sponsors. Links for that are in the description. Uh, but let's get the CPU in here. Uh, the funny thing is CPUs have not changed a whole lot. And in... well, there goes the CPU. Uh, they haven't changed a whole lot in the past 20 years, at least not as much as I would have thought they would. This, there's a lot more pins and they're slightly heavier, really. Um, but the sockets are similar, they're not the same. Uh, last time I did this, there was a lever that you pulled up, you set the CPU in and, and all that. Now I know that Intel CPUs have, have um, pins on the motherboard and not on the actual CPU, so you gotta, you gotta be a little more careful with these AMD CPUs, but this is, a Ryzen 5 5600X, yeah, yeah, here. People on other streams do cool close-ups, so I'll do that too. 5600X, um, I bought this one because it has six cores and mainly because it's a little bit cheap. <laughs> yes, I'm on the way to be my, the second Linus. I don't need to be compared with him, you know. Um, but anyway, it's uh, it's a good middle of the road CPU, It's it's not, super expensive, but it's also going to have enough performance for the things I want to do. Now, where is, oh my gosh, that little gold dot on there is so tiny. Last time I did this, there was like a giant, giant triangle that you could easily see on here that's barely there. Um, but I'm just going to set that up in there. Okay. And pop that down. That's pretty simple. Uh, but let's see, now I need to put on a cooler. I think... The last PC I built was, I think, actually like a Pentium 1 or maybe even a, 
486. I think I helped someone build a uh, um, Athlon 1 gigahertz PC, but I didn't actually do the most of the build part. I was helping get everything set up. Um, it didn't need a CPU cooler, the last one that I did. Nowadays, you know, even a Raspberry Pi needs one, but <clears throat> I'm typically used to something like this. This is the uh, CPU cooler I was going to use on my Raspberry Pi gaming PC. Um, that obviously is not going to do enough here, so AMD thankfully includes their own. And uh, I know you can get other third-party CPU coolers, but this one came in the box. It has pre-applied pre -applied thermal paste, so uh, we can go ahead and use it. Now, I have not uh, done one of these. It looks like i got to screw these in, so I'm going to have to unscrew what's in here already. These little clips. I guess the clips are for higher-end CPUs for people that have more money or get free CPUs from vendors, but I do not. Um, funny aside, I bought this thing on Newegg. I bought it the week before Gamers Nexus uh, put out their bombshell report on, um, on uh, Newegg and scamming customers with open box items and things. This was not open box. This was brand new. Um, I paid $225 for it. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's not the cheapest one. It's not the most expensive. It's not a thread ripper or anything like that. Um, eventually, someday, if I do a lot more uh, Linux compilation things, I would like to move up to a faster one. I already do a lot of Linux compilation, but I'm just saying, I would like to move up to one with more threads uh, for more server-oriented tasks and compiling the kernel faster. Ooh, there's a sticker on there. I could put that in somewhere, but we'll just save the sticker for now. <laughs> yes, trying to build and interact is such a pain and slows things down. It is true. This is not the Verge's PC build. This is a Mac user. Mac users, despite what you may think, most of us are pretty intelligent, but most of us don't want to spend a whole morning setting up our computer. We just want to wait a week for it to show up in the mail instead of going to Micro Center and buying all the parts ourselves. This is not sponsored, by the way. The last video was, but this video is not. I just love Micro Center. It's, if you haven't been there, it's a pretty cool place. Um, haven't been paid to say that, but if you would like to see me uh, do some more things with Micro Center in the future, let me know in the comments later. Um, I will try, if, if anybody has a super chat, I'll try to remember to, uh, to mention it. Like this one, check your BIOS version 2 CPU is supported first. I actually uh, looked it up. I think that this one has uh, version 10 or 11 or something which supports this CPU. We'll see. If it doesn't, then I might have to pop it back out and uh, upgrade it. I actually do have um, the latest, I think, version 15 BIOS on here. See, these are other things like if you're a Mac user, you're like, oh, you just buy the Mac and it works and you upgrade it and it works and then you sell it for almost as much as you paid for it nowadays and then you get a new Mac. Uh, with PCs, things are a little bit more complicated sometimes. Now, uh, this is going to go into the PC like that, so I'd want it to be this way because then AMD would be at the top, but it looks like I can't do that. So I'll have to do it. Maybe I'll do it this way. And it has pre-applied thermal paste. Now I do have, where is it? I do have a tube of Noxua thermal paste. I'm a Mac user, but I still, I, I still actually, let me switch. Uh, I still actually build um, Pi stuff a lot. So I do need thermal paste sometimes. I do need uh, coolers, but they're always on a much smaller scale. I thought about, you know, squirting a ton on here for fun and stuff, but then I'd have to clean it up and that would take longer. And that's highly annoying, so I'm not going to do that. Um, so I think I'm going to put it this way. Uh, that way this little AMD thing doesn't jet out over the memory. This is interesting, though. It does jet out a tiny bit over the memory. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue. I don't think it will because the first slot here I'm not going to use uh, because I only have two sticks of RAM, so I'll put it into these two slots. All right, I did do some research. I know what dual channel, channel memory is, and I know enough uh, to be dangerous here. Looks like that's that. Another thing that's interesting, I noticed a lot of the people that build PCs on YouTube seem to use ratcheting screwdrivers. I don't know what the heck that is. I mean, I used a ratcheting screwdriver a long time ago, and I hated it. I don't know why people like them so much. Maybe there's way better ratcheting screwdrivers nowadays than there were 20 years ago, but this one's not going in. There we go. I think that's starting. 
Uh, I think I just stripped a little metal off that because I see a couple metal shavings on the motherboard. Oops. <clears throat> Nothing a little can of compressed air won't fix, though. I think it's insert obligatory. You should screw them in in a cross pattern. It's like, eh, just screw them in. Not one all the way, but it doesn't matter if it's a cross pattern, if you go around the horn or whatever. The key is to have as much even pressure as you can, and I believe I have achieved that goal. So now I need to plug this into... Where is C... I don't see one that says CPU fan. There's... Oh, CPU fan, CPU opt. I don't know what opt means, but I'll just do CPU fan. And uh, something like that. Okay. CPU fan is in. Let's get our memory in there. I probably should have done the uh, M.2 drive first. But whatever. Um, let's see. Memory. So on here it has, this board is kind of cool in that, I guess this is one thing that didn't happen a long time ago. Let me switch cameras here to iPhone. And the iPhone is on a gimbal, so I can do this. Uh, so this board has uh, a cool feature. Man, my hand is blown out there. Uh, it tells you uh, the first slots that you should occupy are DDR4, A2, and B2. So a long time ago, they used to have like colored slots and things. I guess this is the new thing. It is nice to have all these silk screens everywhere. That's something that was missing a long time ago. That They didn't have silk screens for all the labels of the front panel connectors and things. You need to have to constantly look back at the... Uh, at the, the manual that comes with the motherboard. Luckily, that's not the case here because there was no manual included in this used motherboard that I bought. Let me switch back here. So, what do people say in chat? <laughs> Cases are overrated. It is nice to have a case. Now, you know, one funny thing is I, I bought this particular case because I thought it was overkill and absolutely ridiculous. But after using it a little bit, I appreciate two things. One is there's tons of room so that like building in it is super easy and moving it is super easy. Two, these handles are actually <laughs> ridiculously helpful. And this is coming from somebody that owned a, a Power Mac G3, the blue and white Yosemite, and a G4, the graphite one. And I had handles on those. So I, I'm thinking back to those times, like it was super easy to carry those things. And it's really easy to carry this. You don't have to do that weird, you know, that kind of walk because you got these handles on it. Anyways, uh, let's see, RAM. That's what we were doing. Somebody in chat distracted me. This could take all day if we keep doing that. Let me switch back here. NZXT. I, to be honest, I didn't spend a lot of time picking out a case. The main goal for me was to make it look as overkill as possible. And this GT501 uh, from Asus was pretty much that. Uh, at least it, that was in stock at Micro Center. The bigger and noisier the case. No, it, it's actually the more RGB you have, the faster the PC. That's what I've learned. Um, okay, so we want to put in the M.2 drive. This comes with a heat spreader on it. And there's pre-applied thermal paste. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a bit of goop on it. I don't know. Should I reuse this one or should I? I think I have, yeah, I have a, I have a little thermal. Ooh, yuck. I have a little thermal pad here I could put on it. What should I do? Should I reuse it? Huh? I don't see thermal pad. Okay, so okay, I'll, I'll do that. That's probably the more correct thing to do in this case. Because this one is looking... Oh, yuck. It just touched me. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this one because it has like hairs on it and things like that. That's kind of disgusting. All right, so it was funny. That stuff is kind of sticky, and it gets a little stickier over time, too, it seems. I always wonder the different brands that make this, uh, this actual, like, sticky thermal pad, um, whether or not they're actually cheating and just, like, using double-sided tape or something, depending on how sticky and less gooey it is. This Sabrent is kind of fun. It comes with this fancy little metal, I don't know, it feels aluminum. 
Yeah, it's probably plastic, actually. Comes with this little metal case. Let's see, there it is. Fancy. This is $1,200 of storage. Ridiculous overkill, but this was used in a build. And I might link this later if, uh, if my sister can remember to pop in a note for this timestamp. I might put in later uh, the build that I used with this Rocket Q on a Raspberry Pi Taco NAS. The world's biggest all SSD Pi NAS, as you would say. Um, let's see. Yeah, the stock cooler. So this is a 5600X. I don't plan on overclocking it. So, I mean, I might at some point, and if I do, I might change the cooler. But the stock cooler should work okay for it, as far as I can tell. I've never been one to mess around too much with cooling. If it works, it works. If it if it's getting close to the edge of whatever performance you need, you know. Then, then you might want to change the cooler. But I run a lot of my pies naked. Not me naked, the pies themselves. Naked. What is... Whoa. It's a weird, like, double height thing here. Okay. Let me get this in. Ah! Ah, oh, I can't do this. Now, another fun thing is when you buy used... You can expect to have at least one little problem somewhere. I found that there's one, uh, it looks like a capacitor that's next to the RTL chip, that the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet chip. This motherboard actually has. There's one reason I chose this one. Oops. Uh, this motherboard has a 2.5 gig Ethernet port built in. I'm not going to actually use that right now, but I might from time to time because uh, I'm going to put a 10 gig Ethernet uh, card on this uh, by 4 slot. Um, but that chip has uh, one capacitor that I noticed was dangling. So I don't think they come to the factory dangling. I'm guessing that somebody was jacking off. No, that's the wrong term. They were uh, yanking off a GPU, and probably the GPU slammed into that and knocked it. I also noticed that the uh, retaining clip for the GPU is missing on this one. So that is the second uh, piece of evidence that I have for that happening. Um, but anyway... <laughs> Yes. Yeah, no, I'm building this for myself for now. Um, I this, this channel, my YouTube channel does not have the audience or the <laughs> demonetized. This doesn't have the audience. Oh boy, I think that's going to come back to bite me. Um, this, this channel doesn't have the audience or the uh, sponsorships yet to be able to just build random PCs for other people. I don't have the budget for it, um, especially... <laughs> to buy uh, drives like this and the Sabrent 8 terabyte NVMe drive. Um, but, you know, for now this is going to be used for uh, building Linux and playing games and doing some extra testing and things. Um, probably also have a second backup target for some projects that I'm working on since it'll have 10 gigabit Ethernet. Um, let me switch here. Yes, Ubuntu. Or Ubuntu, I don't know. I say, I say Ubuntu, but, you know. As I've found a million times before on this channel, everybody's going to complain about my pronunciation no matter what, so I'll just say it the way that I say it. All right. Whenever you're putting on a thermal pad, try to get your finger oils all over the thing. That's actually not the advice that I have, but that's what I usually do, so that's what I'll say. All right. So how do we want to put this? Right up to the edge, almost. Okay, so I've applied my new thermal pad. I should have left this one on. I'll push it on there a little bit. And the crazy thing is this is going through this label. I might need to pull off this label. I think the label might be a thermal pad, too. So we're going, like, two layers of thermal pads here. But that's okay. This motherboard is not fancy enough to have those like zero zero screw uh, little levers that, that hold down M.2. There's another piece of hair on this motherboard. That's another fun thing. Uh, if you buy used motherboards, you can expect to have some weird gnarly things. I already sprayed it off once. I actually do need to spray it off because I have a couple little pieces of metal from screwing in those screws. I want to get those off. So I'll do that.
the motherboard seems to be coming together quite well. I should probably get it up into the case at some point. First, I'm going to pull out. Uh, let me change the camera angle again. Ugh. When you're doing this by yourself, it's always a little bit more fun. I do have some nice, nice extra monitors. So I can actually see what I'm doing, though, at least. Okay. You can see the case, hopefully, at this point. I don't know if you can or not, but okay. I think you can. Ah, that's interesting, too. Let me switch to the iPhone here. I just noticed that this brand new cooler has a nice big scratch on it, on one of the blades or something. That was not from me. That's annoying. It'll make a little a little line when it's spinning. I might have to try cleaning that off later. Ugh, that's besides the point. AMD quality control. Although I don't think that they care too much about their stock fans, which some people just throw away. Oh, everybody give them a like. I like that, yeah. Ah, Newegg. <laughs> it is from Newegg. We'll see if it even works. This is not open box, but that doesn't uh, doesn't mean a whole lot. Let me clean up a little bit here. Ah, safety. There's a safety information card. Uh, see that safety information that came with the RAM. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe it's a California thing. You know how everything can kill you in California. Maybe this RAM is too powerful for the state of California, I'm not sure. I'll put that over there. All right, and then I'm going to get the... Let's see if I can see everything. Okay. There is no perfect OS. That is 100% the truth. I mean, if you talk to a Windows fanboy, they'll say that it's Windows is the perfect OS. If you talk to a Mac fanboy, Mac OS is. If you talk to an Arch person, there is only Arch. <clears throat> but I'm choosing Ubuntu mostly for support reasons because a lot of the world of things like gaming on Linux uh, prefers a, a Ubuntu derivative, so things often work better there. That's not to say it's the best, but I just wanted it to be a little bit easier. Uh, let's see. Motherboard screws. Got that. What else we got? DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, I use a Final Cut Pro X. DR DOS. Yes, six point two two. I still have my DOS, uh, my DOS disks. Actually, I think I got rid of the disks. I put them onto my NAS. I imaged them, so I could someday take the side panel off. Oh yeah, well I, I will do that. Um, actually, before the stream started, I took off this panel. Mostly because I knew there was a good chance, I don't know if you can see it, there was a good chance I would drop the thing. Um, and also because it was creating a lot of reflections. I don't know if you can see that. There's the, the big old Aperture Light Dome 2. Um, but it was creating a lot of reflections and I didn't want to drop it and shatter it on the stream, which I could do right now, maybe. We'll see. Uh, but I also already did the peel on it. I'm sorry about that um, to anybody that wanted to see the peel today. I already did the peel on it, and um, I don't know if the holes, I don't know if the mounting points are on here already. Let's see. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Huh. Well, if you buy this case, the, the holes are already lined up for an EATX motherboard, so that's nice. And uh, I, I did, I mentioned in, uh, let me switch to this camera. I mentioned in my Raspberry Pi video, uh, a few things about this case. This case is nice for builds. It's gargantuan, so there's that. Uh, but it does have three, you probably can't see them, so I will switch back to that. It has three 2.5 inch bays, uh, so for SSDs or 2.5 inch hard drives. Um, these are the easiest to get access to. These two are like in the basement, so it's hard to get access, and they're, they have no shock mounting. There's rubber pads on the bottom, but the sides don't have that. So if you put 3.5 inch drives down here, they actually rattle a little bit, and if they're NAS drives like I was using, they, they make a little bit of a ruckus. So not the best, and these are kind of annoying to get on and off, but 
they are drive bays and they do have cable routing in the back. Um, but the worst thing about this case, I'll take off the back cover and, and show you that. Uh, da -da -da -da. This case was, I think I got it for 175 from Micro Center, in case you're wondering. This was the last one in stock, so sorry for anybody else that wanted this case at the St. Louis area Micro Center. The worst thing about this case to me was these two, these two bays on the back. A lot of people are like, oh, hard drives don't need ventilation. Hard drives get hot. Hot things need air. They don't need active airflow necessarily, but they do need air to replace the hot air that surrounds them. In this case, has none. There's no ventilation on this part of the case. There's no ventilation on this part of the case. The only ventilation back here is from this power supply cutout, a cutout here, and the motherboard cutout, basically. So yeah, for a, for a light desktop hard drive that doesn't get used a lot, that might be enough. But if you're going to build a NAS, in this case, don't. Uh, it's not built for that, for hard drives that are cranking 24-7. Uh, but anyway, here's the backside. It it looks okay now. It'll look really bad later, so we won't spend too much time looking at that, hopefully. Like I said, I'm not a PC builder. That's not my channel. If you want that, go to Jay-Z Two Cents, Linus Tech Tips, um, Gamers Nexus. They don't actually build PCs as much as tear them down and make fun of them. Um, <clears throat> and plenty of other channels, too. So let's see. We need to get this thing in there. So I need these motherboard screws. What's this, the closest thing to a perfect OS? Uh, Windows 11 sure isn't it. Um, it might take them five or six years to get it good. Like it took uh, Windows Vista. Vista was, uh, Vista and 7 both were interesting. They started out, 7 was a little better than Vista, but they started out pretty bad, like Windows 11. And over time they became decent, but they had such a bad reputation that nobody wanted to keep using them. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to get this thing in. I could lay down the case on its side, but I don't have the room for that here. So I'm just going to try doing it with one hand here. Now this is <clears throat> when you're doing a build by yourself and doing all the cameras by yourself and switching everything by yourself. It's not the most fun in the world, but we're going to try to get this like that. Get a couple of these screws started. This is another thing that Mac users don't ever have to do. Because our Macs are the size of your hand, this motherboard is bigger than any Mac besides the Mac Pro in existence. And much heavier. Okay, got two screws started. When I get three, I'll be a little happier. This motherboard does have an integrated I.O. shield, so I did not have to pop an I.O. shield in the back first. All right. Okay, we got three screws started. I'm feeling safer about it not just falling out. <clears throat> There's four. The reason I'm saying this is because if I count them out, I will remember not to forget one. Six. Although by talking to you while I'm doing this, I'll probably forget my count. Seven. Let's see. Maybe that one's not in a fun spot. Like I said. I'm trying to do this so that you can see it. I hope you appreciate that. <clears throat> That's eight, and I think this is it. Yeah, nine. Oh, that one's in a little cutout. Oh, that's not fun. There we go. <clears throat> so I'll have to test that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. That's the chip right there that's literally dangling, dangling on one half from that uh, GPU that was not jerked off, but yanked off. <clears throat> ah, yes, I would love to try a Steam Deck. The first thing I would do is see how fast it recompiles the Linux kernel, because that is my measurement of what is a good PC. 
<clears throat> okay, we got the motherboard in. Should probably do the power supply next. Let me clean up this desk a little bit. Move some things around and I'll check on chat. Don't need that. There's some trash. Switch back to main camera so you can see what I'm doing and make fun of me in the background. You know, I've never used Gen 2. So it'll be something that would be fun to test out someday, but uh, never used it personally, never installed it. All right. Don't, yeah, we will need a couple of these screws, so I'll leave these over here. Done with the motherboard. Uh, I could put this in soon, but I'll wait. I'll need that for that. Look, I have cable ties. These are not LTTstore.com, but if you want to support this creator, me, not LTT, um, go ahead and hop over to redshirtjeff.com. I actually don't, I get like a buck or two per shirt. I could get better margins if I had my own store or something, but, uh, you know, mostly I wanted to make those shirts because I like having shirts to wear. This is not a, a Red Shirt Jeff shirt. This is a Netherlands uh, KNVB uh, soccer shirt that I have. I wore it because it's orange and I like the color orange. Oh, and uh, this is also not for sale, but Serve the Home, STH. If there's any Serve the Home fans out there, uh, give a shout out and uh, thanks. Uh, thanks also to Patrick from Serve the Home for helping me on that cluster project. That was a fun collaboration we did a couple months ago building the Raspberry Pi supercomputer. I think I got everything here and it's time for the power supply. This will be fun. This is a 80 plus gold. I don't know. It's, it's a decent power supply. The main reason I bought this one was because honestly, when I was in the store in the main aisle, this is Mac user thinking here, I thought, man, that case looks really cool. Like it has this, I don't know if you can see it. Let me, let me switch to this camera. Um, it has this cool like stippling effect on it. I don't know. I thought it looked pretty good and Corsair makes decent things. So I was like, eh, you can't go too wrong, I guess. We'll see. 650 watts. I, I think PC Parts Picker said that the, my system needed a minimum of 420 watts or something. You always want to have, I don't know, I would say 50 to 70% load on your, on your PSU would be a good safe margin. Because these uh, PSUs aren't always manufactured to the, to the most utter perfection. Corsair probably does it better than some no-name brands and things. This one does have a sticker saying silent operation, which I like. If your PC is completely idle and the power supply doesn't need a fan running, it can turn off the fan, which is nice for a more silent operation. That's also why I bought this RGB fan. In my Pi build, I had an R I actually just had a white LED fan that would, uh, that would light up white, and that was great, but I realized it wasn't PWM, so the fan just ran full blast all the time. So I bought this uh, Sky Case Flex. What is this? KF1425 FD18SR-P. See, this is another thing, a little mini rant mode here. Mac users, we don't care about all the long model numbers. Like, if you bought an iMac 20 years ago, you'll probably buy an iMac today. And what model is it? Yeah, it doesn't matter as long as it's fast enough to do the things you want to do. All right, so this is a fully modular power supply, which is nice because that means you don't have to have every single thing uh, bundled up and hanging out in here like I used to back in the old days 23 years ago last time I built a PC uh, but an interesting thing that I found last year was that if you try to mix and match these modular power supply cables you can end up exploding a power supply so don't do that it was interesting and I actually recorded the moment that I did it so that was kind of cool but uh, probably not the best idea because then I was out a $90 cheap power supply. All right, so we need the motherboard. Let's see what else we got here. I had to rebundle these up after I took apart the, the Pi PC build. So they're a little disorganized. I think that's PCIe. Ha, <laughs> Olex. Hopefully I don't need to use that. Another PCIe. CPU and CPU. There's two CPUs, I guess. 
I guess if you have a dual CPU board or if you have, I don't know, are there CPUs that need that much power? Let me know in the chat. Burn the P PSU. You don't want to burn it, not this one. This one, this one, what was it? How much was this one? I have the price somewhere. Yeah. I paid 200 bucks for this thing. That was kind of expensive. I didn't know PSUs ever got that expensive, but I guess nowadays they do. I mean, if you're buying like an industrial bench power supply, I can imagine. CPU. Oh, wrong end. Let's try this one. All right, and this card, what does this card require? Does it say on the box? This is another fun thing about a lot of PC parts. Like, it doesn't tell you on the outside of this box what it actually requires. Like, does it require one? One connector. I think this one, from the last time I plugged it into my Pi, I think it required two PCI Express connectors, which I wonder. So if I take this one out, I know there's something about like using two cables instead of one or something, but if I can do one and have it power everything, and this has this weird like double mated connector that you can slide on the extra connections or something. I don't know. I'll just do one and Hopefully that'll be good. Let me know in the chat if I'm going to blow up this card by doing that. Yeah, you, someone's mentioning that this uh, 2.5 gig is a real tech chip. It is. That's the uh, RTL 8125B, which I am extremely familiar with. I have used many of those in my Pi projects. So um, I believe that Ubuntu has it uh, already, but I could install the, the, the actual uh, driver from Realtek, which I found performs slightly better than the one built into the Linux kernel for some weird reason. All right. PCI Express. Blowing, the, blowing up the card will be entertaining. It would be entertaining, but it took me a year and a half to get one of these. And uh, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to blow this one up because I still, I, so a little aside, um, I'm, I'm working on another video on GPUs on the Raspberry Pi, external graphics cards on the Pi. In the past year and a half, two years, I don't know how, it's, how long it's been, October 2020, I think, was when I started this journey. Um, CoreForge on GitHub has made, uh, has hacked the driver for the Radeon, uh, the Radeon Linux driver to work with the... Um, which one was it? The 5850 or something? The Radeon 5850, an older card. It's an older card, sir, but it checks out. Um, he has it rendering uh, the frame buffer and it, he has it rendering an actual X window system in Linux. And he got uh, the, uh, G, there's the Mesa like GL cubes demo or something like that. He got that to run, but it locks up very quickly. Uh, so he's doing a lot of work with that, done, done some awesome work with it. Uh, so there's a GitHub issue that has all his, his work on it. So I'm, I'm trying to replicate that. And also, I forget who it is, uh, someone else got that little, the little SM750 graphics chip working on the Pi, uh, found that there were some cache coherency issues in the driver, um, change, uh, changed those out to 32-bit accesses. This is all a bit over your head for some people probably, but I'm going to try to take all these things that I've learned, there's probably over a thousand comments on GitHub now, and distill it into a good video that explains the problems, why the Raspberry Pi uh, has a troublesome PCI Express bus, how we're getting these cards to work at least somewhat, and then the next steps. And I actually got uh, two or three rings. There's like 16 rings of, of activities that work on this RX 6700 XT with the AMD GPU driver. I got two or three of them to work so far, but those are not the two or three that are required for graphics output or um, computational use of the, the GPU or anything, so nobody's going to be mining on a Raspberry Pi using that card yet. Hopefully nobody ever does. Um, but anyway, because I don't want to make the chip shortage any worse. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I would like to go to 100 gig Ethernet someday. Uh, I would need some pretty hefty sponsorships uh, to get the money to do that, though. Right now, I'm, I'm upgrading everything in my house to 2.5 gig minimum, but mostly 10 gig. I have a video that I hope to do on that soon, at least a small update. Uh, yeah, Linux is not that hard to use anymore. It's, uh, it's easy enough that a Mac user like me can use it. Now, some people would argue that I am not just a Mac user, but I do use a Mac for 90% of my computing activities. All right, I think that's all I need. 
because the RGB and fans can go right into the motherboard, I believe. Yeah, there's fan connectors. There's RGB, so I don't need to use the RGB to SATA connector. So I should be able to just get this guy in here and uh, that's going to go up to USB 3. I can do that right now. USB 3, the Raspberry Pi that I put on here did not do USB 3, so I had to use a USB 3 to USB 2 adapter. Why are you not going in? This is interesting. It says USB 3.2, and it's not going in. It's kind of annoying, because it looks like it should fit. Should I just push harder? It's, it's the right way up. Now this is, it's USB, so, you know. And there's one pin missing, and it's the right space. So why? There we go. The answer was push harder. So, yeah. So it's funny, this, this uh, case actually says USB 3.0. Ha, I just noticed. Let me show you this. When I did the Pi build, I was mentioning that I had to do uh, USB 2. So I put these little labels on. Uh, but these ports on the case itself are labeled as 3.0. Now, I don't know enough about the USB protocol and the hardware design to know this, but the, uh, oh, come on. Ugh. Oh, brother, as they say, used a brother P-touch. Um, the question I have is, this said, ignore the fact that I still have the 2.0 on my finger. This said USB 3.2, and we're going to ports labeled 3.0. Uh, will these still do USB 3.2 speeds on the front panel through there? I don't know. I mean. Some, with a lot of cables, as long as the cable's as good as it needs to be for the distance it is, the signal should work. So, I don't know, we'll see. Let me switch back. And I can take these off my finger. Grab another quick drink and check chat. Yes. All right, so it should work. Oh, there might be another pun by the end of this. Don't worry. Oh, I forgot I have my soda. I need a little bit of that. A little caffeine to make it through the tail end of this. All right. So, I got that in. I might as well grab... So this case has HD audio. Last time I built, I think it was AC97 or something like that. The annoying thing is HD audio is way over here, so I'm not going to be able to go through there. I don't even know if this cable is going to make it. This is interesting. So I'll show you. This cable, this cable comes from this top corner up here, and it, it's going to have to go all the way across to this bottom corner. I do not know if I have the distance. If I stick it through here, it might just make it. Wow, that's terrible. There will not be any cable management on this particular cable because there's no room for it. This cable is stretched all the way across the back. But that's okay. If I don't turn around the PC, you won't have to see the backside, and it doesn't matter what kind of cable management I do. May I remind you that last time I built a PC, the cables would just be in this area. And you had, I think on that PC, I had two hard drives and then a floppy drive, uh, Three, three point or three and a half inch or whatever size and a five and a half inch and so I had the floppy cable hanging out here two ID hard drives cable hanging out there and then I think there was also a CD-ROM in that one I think I upgraded to a CD-ROM at some point so I had all those cables up there and you had all the Molex of course they're all spaghetti colored cables and things the motherboard cable um, what else there was there was something else down here at the bottom I don't remember oh I the speaker had its little red and black cable. So that thing was a big mess. So this is already a huge improvement um, once I get the power supply in. It's already a huge improvement over anything I've ever built before. And we don't need to talk about the Raspberry Pi builds cable management last week. If you'll notice, I deftly covered everything up with the backside uh, cover. Um, now I'm putting this power supply in. It's interesting, Corsair does it so that the logo is up with the fan facing down. 
some other power supplies flip it and it looks funny when you put it down uh, but this case has a, uh, a filter down low which is nice uh, that has an intake for the power supply itself so the power supply can be independent from the rest of the case in terms of cooling oh and I just realized since I did the pie build on here I have all these screws on so I need to take them off so that I can put them right back on if I had a sponsor, I could do a word from our sponsor right now, but since I don't, I'll just ask you, if you want to be my sponsor, you can just go on to Patreon or GitHub Sponsors. How's that for a little segue? Always down to Jeff, give Jeff Geerling a hard time. Yeah, Marco can give me a little bit of a hard time. He actually uh, was helpful in securing a cool item that my dad and I will be installing in a future video on Gearling Engineering. There's a link in the description to that, so go check it out. If you're interested in, we'll do, we might do some Raspberry Pi things on that channel from time to time, but that channel is going to be more about electronics, radio engineering, uh, computing in general, stuff like that. Why is this not going in? Why are you not? Um, and other things like that. So there's two videos up on the channel already. The latest video we talked about UPSs. Always a fascinating topic that has everybody on the edge of their seats. But he has been fortunate to work for a variety of different radio stations working on critical infrastructure. And uh, it's also interesting, and I have been following events in Ukraine, of course, very closely. And I'm very sad about the fact that there's a war going on over there and hope that that, uh, hope that it can end soon. Uh, but I did notice that the, uh, they tried blowing up that TV tower and I was amazed at the resilience. <laughs> that TV tower did not fall over from a direct, looked like some sort of missile strike. So I know that whatever radio engineer is there, uh, the TV engineers that uh, maintain that tower, I'm sure that there were some devastating, sad things that happened, but the fact that that, that tower stands is a testament to good engineering, probably a little bit of over-engineering too, uh, but pretty interesting. Uh, let's see, so, how am I supposed to put these through the rubber grommets or, oh, I guess these are for the SATA drive, so I am supposed to put this through the rubber grommet. These pre-installed cables are stuck in these rubber grommets though, so, I don't know, can I just jam it? Yep, okay. We'll do that. Oh, it's bent the wrong way, so I'm gonna have to like finagle it. Can you guys see this? Okay, you should be able to see this. Okay, I can zoom in a little bit more. If you can see the, the computer a little bit closer, let's see. Hopefully the lighting is okay. I have a light set up that's in there. Sorry if it's a little dark. Like I said, I am the cameraman, the live stream operator etc. My sister is helping moderate chat. Uh, anything else going on? Okay. Let's see. Let's get this plugged in. Oh, I hate how much you have to push on these things to get them to latch. Feels like you're going to break the motherboard. All right. So that's in. I need CPU power. CPU is here. Oh, I will need one SATA power cable. Shucks. I have to put that in later. Okay, CPU power up here. Can you see that? I think, yeah, it's a little dark, sorry. Hey, support me on Patreon if you want me to figure out a way to hire somebody to do camera work for these things. Uh, okay, so this is annoying. Get in there. Yeah. Okay. I'll just leave a little bit hanging there. Oh, and uh, let's see, system fan. Okay, I'm presuming that this is the system fan because that's what I would call it. And I'll just leave that bundled up and plug it in. Can't even see what I'm doing here. There we go. All right, and then we want to do some RGB in. Looks like this is a four pin 12 volt GRB, so that's 12 volt GRB. So I'm going to do this one over here because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, 
apparently RGB is what makes your computer fast nowadays, according to all the cool people that do this stuff. All right, 12 volt goes right there. I actually looked into using a Pico, a Raspberry Pi Pico as an RGB controller. I didn't see a whole lot of work out there for it yet, um, but that would be a fun project that I may, may or may not take on someday. What are people saying? What OS? I have Ubuntu on this, this uh, flash drive, so we're going to pop that on there in a little bit. GRB. Oh, so the, uh, the connector has, it's 12 volt, then GRB, depending on the perspective of the connector. So RGB if you go one way, GRB if you go the other way. I was just reading it backwards. All right, we got power supply, CPU, motherboard. Uh, we'll need the graphics card soon, but not yet. I'm going to put this SSD on here. Because if we want to have 16 terabytes of SSD storage in the system, why not? This makes for another cable that we have to route back here. So this is one nice thing about this case is they did design it intelligently for these, these drives here. They come in and out pretty easily. Grab the right screws. Waiting for GPU on a Pi. I am too. <laughs> I mentioned a few minutes ago, if you're just joining the stream, you can go back later and, and watch. I will hopefully have some timestamps. Um, but I'll be, uh, I'll be doing a follow-up video on GPUs on the Raspberry Pi soon. Um, it's been in the works. I just, there's so many other things in the works that it's been... Where'd my screwdriver go? There it is. Um, so many other things going on that I just have not had the time yet. I'm sure I've missed a few super chats too, but don't worry, I'll get to those towards the end, I hope. Um, but I'm also very forgetful, so if I don't, please don't be offended, and I will try to address them in comments later. This is the first time I've done a live stream for like six or eight months or something. It's been a while. I think last time was when I hit 200,000 subscribers. Thank you for subscribing, by the way. And if you would like to, um, hey, there's my face. If you'd like to, ow. If you'd like to uh, hit like on this video too. Let's see. <sighs> Almost. That is a nice thing about these modern motherboards with built-in M.2 and on the Raspberry Pi too, like, uh, what was it? I think the Bit Pirate was the smallest M.2 Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 carrier board that I've used so far with a full-size M.2 slot. It's just so nice and compact. You don't have to have a separate power cable like these SATA drives. You don't have to have a separate SATA cable. You don't have to have a SATA controller. So for one, two, or three, or maybe even four drives on a CPU that supports it, it is super nice to have um, to have M.2. There's still a use case for SATA. One is they're a lot cheaper still, so it is nice to have cheaper hard drives. Um, but also, if you're going to have 20 or 30 or 40 or 60 or however many on your system, uh, it is easier to do that with SATA at this point in time than it is to have a CPU that supports hundreds of lanes of, uh, of NVMe because they use PCI Express lanes and your CPU has to support that. All right, so we got that in. Don't look at the backside. It's kind of a mess. Uh, and then I'm going to need SATA power. That's annoying to have to have a whole cable just for one drive, but whatever. It is what it is. Huh, that says SATA and PETA. Do people have parallel ATA drives anymore? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do people run those? Where is Redshirt Jeff? I told him to stay out of here for this because the parts in this PC are a little too expensive. Don't want him breaking anything. All right. And somebody, oh, let's do this. Somebody might ask on here, why am I not doing any water cooling? First of all, this system doesn't really need it. Second of all, uh, I have done a little plumbing in my life. 
And there's no way you could convince me to ever put anything that I've touched inside a PC that deals with any kind of water. Um, that is the reason why Redshirt Jeff has this, is because um, I did do some plumbing. And surprisingly, the part, knock on wood, uh, the part that I, of my basement that I did do uh, recently um, has not started leaking yet, so I'm amazed. I sweat some pipes for the first time in my life, and they've still stayed together. Now, they don't look that great, but just like the backside of this PC, we don't need to look at it, and it won't be a problem. All right. Yeah, this is a B550 Elite. Um, I think that's the version 1. It's the older one, but I bought this used. Um, it's a decent motherboard, you know, whatever. All right, so we got everything there. I need to do the RGB lights on this fan, and I need to plug in the fan itself. So let me get this out of here. All right. Yeah. These front panel fans need to plug in somewhere. And where's their fan plug? There's CPU opt. Where's the fan head? You'd think there'd be a fan header somewhere up here, but there isn't. It looks like there's fan three. Is this fan three? So, oh, this fan two's over here. So I'm guessing we're just going to have to go down to this fan three down here. There's not anywhere easy to get into there, so I will try. Oh, man. Yeah, here, I'll show you the backside just for fun. It's getting a bit messy back here, but that's okay. That's why they have a solid panel on the back. Well, I don't know what that sound was, but I hope it wasn't bad. So we're getting a little bit messy on this side, but that's okay. Right, so here's the fans, and out of the box it came with this little like three to three to one adapter. So I'm gonna try. We'll go in there. Let's try to get this. Oh boy. You know what? I'm gonna go under here. Where does the? Oh, I'll have to go up above. That's annoying. This doesn't... I'll show you on the front side. Ugh. See how hopeful those handles are? Let's see if you can see this. You probably can't see this low enough. Let me zoom out. Whoa, that's zooming in. There's the motherboard. Whoa. Ha. Hello there. Yeah, this is the lens that I don't normally use, so it, it doesn't have a lot of... This is like the kit lens that comes with the Sony A6000. Not a very good lens, in my opinion. But it works, so that's why I'm using it. All right, so I need to get these fans plugged in way over here. But this cable has all these little jumpers on it, these little Y adapters. So I guess I'll just have to do this, and it'll be a little unsightly, but whatever. This is a three-pin cable. Because uh, these fans are not PWM. Uh, but those are in Sys Fan 3. All right. Uh, I guess they could fit just like that. Okay, that, that's not so bad. Can't quite reach around all the way. All right. So my motherboard. Jam that down here. Ah. <sighs> Both SSDs are installed. Yeah, yeah, the boot drive is going to be the NVMe. And really, you don't need 8 terabytes for a boot drive, but yeah, I, you don't need it today, but in the future I will need it. So um, I think that's all that I need from here. Don't need any motherboard, motherboard screws. Don't need any of these power cables. So I'll take all this, Just stick it back here for now. This is a nice thing about having my full workshop for this. My desk in my office where I record most of my videos is totally not the best place to do a build like this. I think the next thing is actually, should I do, I'll do this, uh, this itty bitty, 
This was $100. It's the Asus XG C100C 10 gigabit Ethernet card. I believe it uses uh, a Quancha, yeah, a Quancha chip inside, which is very well supported in in Linux. And I'm going to put it into which slot is this? This one. I'm going to put it into the uh, second by 16 slot. It's by 16 physically. Which one is this? By 16 physically. However, it is only by four, I think, electrically. It only has pins out to here. Uh, but this slot goes through the south bridge, or I don't know what this is called nowadays. It's the, the motherboard controller, the chipset. Uh, so it does not go direct into the CPU. I think that the 5600 has enough lanes that you could have a uh, by four or even maybe another by 16 slot. Um, so you could use uh, two graphics cards or something with the full bandwidth. But in this case, this is this card I think only uses by four anyways. And why are you not going in? There we go. All right. Maybe I can hire Redshirt Jeff to paint that uh, PCIe shield matte black to match the case. You could put an RGB light on the connector too. <laughs> okay, so that's in. And I think, I don't know if the driver's pre-installed in Ubuntu. We'll find out later. Uh, which card? I, I mentioned it's the X, what is it? XG C100C Asus. It's a RJ45 10 gigabit Ethernet card. I already tested it on the Raspberry Pi and it works great. The problem on the Raspberry Pi is you only have PCI Express Gen 2 by 1, which is 500 megabytes per second maximum theoretical speed. In the real world, you're only going to get 400 megabytes per second out of that thing. So uh, 400 megabytes. People often say, you said megabytes. I think you meant megabytes. It's like, no, meg megabytes are a thing. And what is that? I don't need a user manual. At least I hope I won't. Um, anyway, megabytes are, uh, I don't know. You can look it up online. Megabytes and megabytes. But it puts through 400 megabytes per second, which is about 419 megabytes per second. All right. So this is, this is, you know, surprisingly, this is not the most expensive part of this build. This, um, I know some people are going to be a bit jealous when I say this. I got this for 500 bucks because of some extreme luck and uh, the help of a very kind viewer who helped me to get this card. Uh, so this one's going to need those top two slots taken out. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but this card is not the most expensive part of the build by far. The, that little SSD under there is $1,300. US dollars, which at this point would be something like 50 billion rubles. Um, ah. Hopefully that didn't hit anything bad on the on that 10 gigabit card. All right, let's see. Um, wait a second. Apparently that's the second and third slot down. There is nothing on the first slot on this board. Let's try this again. And this time I won't drop the little slot cover onto the 10 gigabit card. But I will put this back up in the top. These are thrum screws, but I've found that they're not actually that easy to use with your thumbs. I don't know. The threads, the threads in this case are not the best tapped threads in the world. Oh, power button. Ha, huh, thanks for mentioning that. Where is that? I don't even see it on here. Front panel power. Here we are. I found them. All right, and those are going to be here, so... Yeah, it would be good to be able to turn on and off the PC. This motherboard does not have... Which is one thing that I was disappointed in. It doesn't have any... There's no LEDs on the board or any display at all that shows like any problems or configuration errors. It also doesn't have a button on it for turning on and off inside the case or on its own. So you do have to have a power button plugged in or you can have a jumper and just short the power, power jumper there. Power switch. Oh boy, I can't see this. I need a flashlight. 
Luckily, I'm in work, my workshop, but I don't know where I put my flashlight. I'll just use this. <clears throat> this is my daughter's headlamp. My flashlight is... Oh, you know what? My flashlight's down under this table, which I put in here for the video, but I can't get to it right now anyway, so... My daughter's headlamp will have to suffice. Okay, power is there. Where's the power LED? Power LED. Oh, that's weird. Power LED has three pins? What? I have to show you this. This is weird. Maybe in chat you can tell me what I'm doing here. Uh, let me... There's all the chemicals. Gotta see those. Um, so here. Okay. Uh, okay, this... Uh, and my poor gimbal's gonna kill me because I'm trying to do it in a weird way. All right, so do you see where I'm shining that light back there, which is completely blurry and you can't see it at all? Let me try switching to my zoom camera, telephoto. And you can't see anything there either. Well, anyway, these, these three pins, eh, there you can see that. See that power LED, plus and minus? That looks like it's saying there are three pins for that. Like the plus is the third pin on the left and the minus is the one on the right, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to plug it in there and see what happens. Oh, there's the chemicals again. Ooh, zoomed in this time. Let me switch back. And switch this back to the wide angle camera. All right. I'm surprised this is all still working. Half of this stuff is on batteries. What time is it? Oh, shoot. We're already bit into this. All right, well, I'll try getting these in. So we have power switch. Power switch is, where did I put that? Power switch is definitely that one. I think that Gigabyte even makes a little adapter thing that goes out to all this, but... It says that plus is here, plus is this one, and then like there's two pins until the minus. That's what it says on the label. I'm going to go with that, but that doesn't seem right to me. I don't know. All right. Put my daughter's headlamp back. Get a drink of water and check on chat. Hopefully it's not a dumpster fire yet. Yeah, this motherboard did not come with a manual <laughs> because uh, I bought it used. And I know yeah, I could look online for something. I don't know. It's more fun just to uh, do it, see what happens, and if it doesn't work or if there's a spark, figure something else out later. Some cases use three pins for a power LED. What the heck for? Like, there's plus and minus. Well, I mean, you know, there's ground and positive, but... I'm not going to Google it right now. That's boring. You don't need to see me Googling. Yeah, it's an LED. There's plus and minus. Why would you need three pins? I don't understand PC case manufacturers. They try to do fancy schmancy things for no reason other than looks, I guess. All right. So we need this. We will need power for the GPU. So how am I going to route this? There are, there are holes. Oh, shoot. There goes a screw. There are holes in here for the GPU power. So I think what I'll do, I'm not going to put a hard drive in here. I might someday if I want to use this for more storage, but uh, I think I can just stick this back in here. Okay. So I'll need both of these to come up through here. Again, this is a huge improvement over 23 years ago. Uh, well, I say it's a huge improvement, but now I'm realizing I'm going to have to unplug this USB 3 header to go up through this doghouse before I put it on. So improvement for looks, not an improvement for ease of maintenance, because next time I do this, I'm going to have to 
<laughs> redo all these things again. Oh boy. Okay. So we got these guys. Ah. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Trying to do this for camera is a lot harder than just doing it by yourself. I have a lot of respect for the people that build PCs like on a weekly basis because this is not as fun as it is if you're just doing it by yourself sitting there and you're on your workbench without trying to let people see what you're doing. I don't even know what I'm hitting here. Oh shoot, it's this HD audio cable. You gotta be kidding. How are you supposed to get... Okay, forget the HD audio for now. I don't even use speakers on my PC anyway. All right, we're taking that out. All right, now it fits. We'll have to figure out a way to get audio. Like this is, why would they have audio way back there? There's no way to get to it on this case. There's literally no way to get audio to that spot. Unless you had like a 35 foot cable, which I don't. All right, well forget the audio. We'll just do this. I don't know where I put those screws. You're there. So one downside, if you're thinking about buying this Gamers Nexus mod mat, is it's completely black in most places. Most of the times that I've used any kind of work surface for electronics or workshop work, I either use solid wood or a very weird colored thing like beige or orange or green or something, because then screws and things stand out. I don't know if you can see that. Um, you know, it stands out here, so I, you're supposed to put screws in places, but they end up over here and then you, you kind of lose them. So anyway, that is one thing that I would like to have a light edition of this mod mat. I did pay the extra for the autograph on it, not because I need Steve's autograph, but because I like their channel and support what they do. And I encourage other people to support creators that do things that you enjoy. Um, I think that's it for that. Let's get this guy in. The first time I've ever installed a GPU in an actual PC since I upgraded the graphics card in my Power Mac G3 many, many years ago. I think it was to a Rage Pro 128, like 64 megs of VRAM or something. I don't remember which card it was, but I got one somehow, and I was like, ooh, I could play, I don't know, Bugdom or whatever the game was at a slightly higher resolution. Quake 3 Arena, games like that. All right, so that's in. And now, how does this go on? Uh, something like that. We'll call that good. Okay, these cables are thick. Oh, come on. Okay. We got one in, and, and this doesn't look amazing, does it? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's there. That's all I'll say about that. Get that USB 3 back in. And I remember from earlier, the key to getting it in was push as hard as you can until it pops, and there it is. Okay, uh, one last thing. The RGB fans in the front of the case. Uh, so I haven't tested any of this, so I don't know if it will work, but I believe that you just plug these into the motherboard. I'll check chat in a minute if I'm wrong, because if there's anything that's true about YouTube chat is that uh, when you say something wrong, at least 20 people will have identified it within a minute. But I believe I can just take this RGB uh, it's four pin, so 12 volts in RGB. Uh, I believe I can just take this and plug it into one of the ports on the motherboard itself. Let's see, where is there one? Oh, you gotta be kidding, it's down here in the front corner. Uh, we got one down here and one up here. What's interesting, I might be able to plug this fan into the one down here. Actually, I can just use this jumper, I'll just do that. I don't think there's a lot of current running through these things. So it's not like they're going to 
catch fire from having six fans plugged in. What is going on here? Oh. <laughs> All right, 12 volts goes there. And then this guy can just go back here. And we'll plug these guys. Where's that plug? There it is. This connector is highly dangerous. There's no key on it, so you can easily plug it in the opposite way and send your 12 volts through the B. And probably pop your blue LED. So the arrow is on the 12 volt side on here. And the arrow is on there. All right. Okay. All right, so for the back side, I'll figure out the audio someday, maybe, or maybe never, because I don't really care about the case audio. If I'm ever going to do audio on here, I'd probably go through HDMI, or I could just use the audio built into the motherboard. I'll show you really quick. I guess some people use headphones plugged into their computer, but... See, the, the motherboard itself has SPDIF out, so if I wanted to do uh, surround audio or something, plus it has all these different outputs here. Oh, that's an input. Uh, but it has these outputs here, and it has rear and sub and stuff. So, like, I don't need those front panel connections. I don't think. Ooh, YouTube Analytics just had a huge dip. I guess I said something that offended people earlier. Let's see. <laughs> RGB connectors are a criminal design. This is a terrible design. There's literally four pins. I mean, the newer one, it looks like, has ground, data, and power. So that's better because it's just serial communication, I presume, and you can address individual RGB LEDs. Uh, and it looks like it's keyed, so there's one pin missing. That's better. It's still, it seems, the four pin one seems worse than USB. I don't know why somebody would have ever thought that was a good idea. I don't know. But these aren't Mac users. We're talking about the design that spec, probably. The ver Katie, if you have not seen the Verge PC build, the now we don't want to rag on somebody who I, I don't whoever built that PC. I don't remember who it is. Some guy built a PC and did it all the wrong ways. I'm a Mac user and but I've done a lot of electronics work and things in the past, so I know my way around stuff that has cables and things. And yes, you know somebody somebody's probably mentioned, you know, oh you got to have your your wrist strap. It's like, eh, nowadays with electronics, the protections they have. There's a, there's an LTT video that he and Electroboom did on uh, shocking different parts of the system with high energy. Um, it's pretty hard to kill consumer electronics gear. I, it's usually pretty hard to kill consumer electronics gear with small shocks and things, even with large shocks. But I do have the work mat plugged into my ground strip. There's, well, Right now it's not plugged in, but uh, I do have it plugged into the ground. Uh, my house is ground, so this is electrically grounded. It's not going to make a huge difference. If we're working in an ESD safe environment, that would matter a lot more. And I'd probably wear an ESD safe garment and things like that if I really cared. You know, this shirt is not, this jacket is not the best thing for that. Um, but anyways, let's get on with this. Yeah, someone does need some sleep after this. I'll need a little sleep after this. I think I got the graphics card in, so let's put this away. What's a wristband? I don't have my Livestrong wristband, but I do have tweezers. I have my I have my specialized tweezers, which I don't even know if you can see me. I have my specialized tweezers if I really needed them. But no, you don't usually use those on a PC build like this. Uh, but I will show you, since I'm up here, I might as well show you the front of the case, which pops off like that. It has a uh, dust filter on the front too, which is nice. This is not a review of this case or anything, but I, I do think after, after getting it, I thought it was going to be absolutely ridiculous, and it is, uh, but it actually is useful. And there's a dust filter on the top that's just magnetic, which is nice. Um, so you could put a radiator up there if you needed more cooling or wanted to be cool. <coughs> All right. Got all that. I have all these cable management ties. I'm not going to use any of them. I'm just going to put this on before I turn around the computer and then I'll show you how beautiful it looks. I 
think I plugged in everything. I got the front panel. We'll see if the uh, LEDs work or not. All right. So look at my cable management. Ah. I'll show you on this camera. It's beautiful. You can't even see the cables. They're managed so well. All right. Ah, back to the front. Oh, my wrists are going to regret that later. All right. So for a monitor, I mentioned this in my last video on the Raspberry Pi gaming PC, but I chose this MSI G240. What is it? G241. It's a eSports gaming monitor. It's 1080p. The reason I went with 1080p is because it was cheaper and I did not have a very large budget. Micro Center is awesome, uh, but I am not an LTT level creator, so my budget was limited and I went with 1080p. But the nice thing is this uh, RX 6700 XT is great at 1080p, but falls apart a little bit if you want to go 4K or 1440 or something. So this is about as good as I'm going to ever do for my gaming for this generation <clears throat> until prices come down again. I definitely need to get a drink of water because my voice is going away. <clears throat> now, I need an HDMI cable. I'm going to try something. Oh, something just fell behind my workbench. I will never find it again. That's okay. <clears throat> I'm going to try something on this build that I've never done before, uh, which is to plug the PC through an HDMI, uh, HDMI splitter into the monitor, which means I will not be able to, I probably won't be able to get 144 hertz right now, but I'm filming in 60 hertz, so it's not like that's going to matter anyway for what you can see. Uh, but I will be able to show you what's on the screen as we set up Ubuntu. Hopefully, hopefully, if it works, which I don't know it will. Where's my HDMI cable? I think I put it over here. Here it is. Well, here's a HDMI cable. I don't know which one this is. There's two here. <clears throat> I'll try to figure out which one goes to the monitor and which one goes to the computer. So input. This goes to the computer. There's only one HDMI port on the back of this card. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love your content. Keep up all the awesome work. Thank you, Alexander. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. Please consider using Arch. Uh, I will be trying other things on here too. Don't worry. Uh, but anyway, this, this uh, card only has one HDMI, but it has three DisplayPort. Um, I wonder though, how much, like what, what total resolution can you pump through this card if you wanted to have four displays? Can I do four 4K displays? I don't know. I, I didn't look up that spec. <laughs> I usually don't run any of my Linux servers with a monitor at all. So this whole GPU thing and displays and all that tech is kind of beyond me. On my Mac, I use uh, I use uh, 60 hertz at 4K, so it's not a huge deal to me. And I don't game on my Mac, <laughs> obviously. Um, and then we're going to need a keyboard and a mouse. All right. And yes, I'm using a Raspberry Pi keyboard as a gaming keyboard. It is not a gaming keyboard. Don't try this at home. But it will work for this stream because it's the keyboard that I have on hand. So let me get this plugged in. Don't worry, we'll work on camera angles in a bit after I get this stuff set up. Because we want to get Ubuntu running on this thing as soon as possible. And this stream might be the longest stream I've ever had. We'll see. It's like a party. We'll probably go until the kids get home. I don't know. We could put a poll in the stream. Should I just stream forever or just stop at some point? I saw that the analytics were going down a little bit, so, you know. But that is not what matters here. What matters more is learning and having fun. And we're doing both. Like I've learned that there's no possible way to get the HD audio cable from the front panel all the way to the connector on this case, or on this motherboard. There's no physical way. You need an extension. All right. 
And, and there's a Raspberry Pi mouse in there. So they are not RGB. However, the rest of this build has a bunch of RGB. So it'd be cool if it all works and it's pretty. But I'm guessing it's all going to be like different colors, but who knows? Like I said, I've never done RGB, RGB on a build before. Hopefully my microphone's still working. It is. Good. I'm not just talking to myself. It's all fun and games till I take out the Raspberry Pi mouse and keyboard. Yes. Let's see. So it can do 4K 120 hertz. My goodness. What kind of bandwidth is that? That's just, That's got to be like 32 gigabits or something crazy. Redshirt Jeff does not need the help right now. If he helps, we... Uh, We'll probably see something explode. I mean, we might see that in just a second anyways. Let me plug in power. Might as well plug in Ethernet too while I'm back here. Who knows if it works. Like I said, there's a capacitor that's literally just dangling in the wind on the back here. And to make things even more fun, this is a cable that I just built yesterday. And there goes my grounding connector. This is a cable I built yesterday because I didn't have an Ethernet cable long enough that was Cat5e or Cat6 for 10 gigabits. Uh, so this is Cat6e. These cables are crazy. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there. You can't really. Let me grab this other camera here. Uh, it's hard to do this one-handed. Um, eh, it's not focusing. Focus, focus. Eh, whatever. Anyway, see how thick that cable? It's like thick with two C's. That is a thick cable. You have to literally smash the cable down a little bit with the pliers to get it to go in. There's my chemicals. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of crazy. And these cables are so thick that even like, you know, if you want to rework it to like, I have to plug it in like this, but it wants to do that. So you kind of have to massage the cable because there's an extra uh, plastic separator inside the cable that separates the four pairs for better, better, better signal integrity. And uh, that makes it so the cable's thick and harder to bend. And I don't know if you've ever used Cat8 cables, but Cat8 is just insane. Cable massage, yes. <laughs> okay, I don't need to go too much uh, into that, that exploration. Is this on? Yeah. All right, let's see if this thing turns on. Okay, power. The RAM is lit up. Let's see. I'm going to do main so that you can see. Let me uh, angle this so that there's not as much glare. Let's see what happens. Now, is the RGB RAM going to stay on even when the system's off? If so, I don't think I like that. That's kind of annoying. I mean, sure, it's pretty. My kids will like seeing that. But if I have the system off, I don't want the RAM pulling any wattage running LEDs. That's kind of insane. Okay, the lights on the fans are not on. Oh, there they go. They are on now. So, okay. The fans are ramping up and down. Ram is gonna turn off after first boot, so hopefully that's what happens. HDMI for first boot. I am plugged into HDMI right now. Oh, here we go. What is it saying? What do we got? Reboot. Oh, I don't have a boot device. I need to plug in this uh, USB. So let's do that. It, by default, it has this weird orange color. I don't know. Maybe that's... Is that like the Aorus color? Oh, I guess it is. That's what's on the motherboard back there, too. There's an LED strip right here that you can barely see. Ugh. That's weird. If you're going to go RGB, you got to have bright lights and things. I don't know why they're doing this, like, weak sauce. All right, so there's plugged in Ubuntu. Use both GPU power cables. I might do that at some point. Right now I'm not doing any GPU insanity, and one cable should be enough. If it fits the power rating, it should be okay. This card is not a high, high current draw power. Let's see. Press a key. Uh, so, okay, where's the, what's the button here to get into BIOS? Because I need to boot off USB, I think. Yeah, 
And you know what? I can try. Oh, there, uh, F12. There's no F12. What? Oh, F12. Ah. No. Delete. Delete. Which delete, though? Okay. Oh. All right. We're going to try this again in a second here. But what do we got? Uh, we got a phone call coming in. Hello? Hello? Uh oh. It's not working. Hello? <clears throat> For some reason, my phone is not working. I don't know why, but twist your ND filter. It's blocking the monitor. Oh, <laughs> okay, I'll do that. And also, does this, there we go. Look at that. That even works. So I do have this on. Let's test this again. Hello? Hello? There we go. Ha! <laughs> so we do got that now. Can you see the monitor? <clears throat> Hopefully not, not too many people have left the stream. It looks like there's a little dip, but then it came back up a little bit, so that's good. Uh, third gen Pentium. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now, now you can actually see the monitor. So I, I have on my main camera here, there's a circular polarizer, and I was using it to minimize reflections. But uh, one thing, if you, eh, I can't see it there. One thing, if you haven't done uh, camera work before, you'll realize that uh, monitors have their own filters on them that cause them to have polarized output that gets completely knocked out if you use a circular polarizer. So basically, I turned that off. Um, I don't know why, but I can't receive a phone call right now. So if you want to put, uh, I think Katie might be trying to send me a message, but if she wants to go into the uh, Google Doc, I should be able to see. Uh, let's see. Am I going to use ZFS for storage? Um, not yet, probably. Tweak all the pre-boot install things. Okay, so let me go back to PC, and uh, it says delete for BIOS. I tried that, but I wonder if this keyboard is not I'm going to try one of the USB I'm going to try a USB 2 port on here that's weird it turned itself off okay so turn it on let's see if anything comes up on here I think it's delete for BIOS F12 for something else now this is funny you <laughs> now my monitor doesn't show anything but I can see it on the stream oh oh here we go delete See, so I'm pressing delete, 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 delete. Okay, now what? Hey, there we go. BIOS has been reset. Okay. All right. So this is cool. It's actually working, and you can see my back. So yeah. All right. Um, clock control. I don't know what most of these things mean. Remember, I'm a Mac user. Extreme memory profile. I think I need to enable that. That way I get 3200 megahertz on the RAM or th oh, whatever, 3200 giga transfers or mega, I don't know what that stuff is, but <clears throat> on the Raspberry Pi I'm used to things like in about one tenth of this power that I get on here. But I do need to figure out how to set boot order. Boot, here we go. Boot option one. So we don't want that, we want the rocket queue to be the first boot option. And how do I boot? How do I boot off USB? Because I have a USB drive in there. Uh, is there anything else I need to do? Let's see. It sees the processor. Clock is good. 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, the date is wrong, but maybe we can fix that later. I don't know. Whoops. Uh, what is it? Three. Oh, I don't know what kind of interface this is. Three, what's the date today? I'll just set it. My phone is like, there, three, three. I don't know what date it is today. No, oh, three. Nope. How do you do this? That's not, no. Nope. Okay, I'm just going to go around the horn here. Three, three, 2022. Okay. And what time is it? I don't know. 11, 
50. There has to be a better way for that. Okay. All right. Uh, so I want it to boot off that drive, but how do I get it to boot off USB? That's the question. I'm sure somebody's saying it in chat, and I'll check in a second after I save and restart. Let's go over here and check chat. Okay. You can't do it in BIOS. Mm. I have boot media. I have a USB flash drive. Isn't that boot media? No. Okay, it's not like in this. Let me try a different USB port. Okay. So disabling UF, UFI only. The USB stick is in, and there's a red LED on it. Oh, well, USB-C stick is now on the ground, but uh, it was in. Let me try another. I'll try a USB 3.2 port here. So I plug it in. The red light is on. F12. F12. OK. The boot USB is like from a couple days ago. I, I just got uh, F12. There's. I have to show you this, because this is kind of funny. So this is the problem of using a Raspberry Pi keyboard. This, uh, <coughs> the keyboard does not technically have an F12 key. It's function F12. So hopefully that will work. Um, and also, yes, the USB key, I've tried it in the USB port, port just below that, and I've tried it in the USB 2 port up above. And uh, you can see the red LED is on. So, whoa. This... Uh, Oh, apparently I've made the gimbal a little bit angry. Oh boy, it's very angry at me. Okay, it's happier now, but I'm going to put it down and go back to here. All right, so you're saying press F12 on boot. Yo, Jeff. Okay, so let's try it. Yeah, shut it down. Okay. See, here's the fun parts of being a Mac user building a PC. I'm sure that other people, and the, you know, you know what I've noticed? A lot of people that build PCs on live streams don't actually set up the OS. And I think it's because that they have these problems and you just don't ever know it because they already have their OS installed on the boot drive and everything. I think that's cheating. I think we should call them out for that. So I'm, I, I pressed F12 a lot. Okay. Oh, here we go. Hey, look at this. So my question is, at this point, do I do UAFI OS or USB 3.2 flash drive? Let's see what people say in the chat. Uh, yes, I, I, I spammed the F12 keyword there. Okay, UF, UAFI. Okay, let's see what happens now. Hey, look at this. This looks right. Oh, I didn't have a chance to choose, so hopefully whatever was selected there was right. We'll see. No IRQ handler for vector. What is your vector, Victor? See, now this is the reason why people buy Macs or buy pre builds. <laughs> I mean, once we get to Ubuntu's installer, I can do it, but what the heck? Oh, it's doing something. Okay. So there's no indication anywhere that anything was happening. There's no activity light on this case. I don't even know if the, I don't know if the, the uh, motherboard has activity lights. Okay. So here we go. Install Ubuntu, English, US, yeah, continue, whatever. <sighs> See, so this, this is why you should subscribe to my channel. I show you the hard parts. Like building a PC, that was easy. I was talking and, and dropping things, and I got it done in less than an hour. Well, like an hour and 10 minutes or something. This is the hard part. Normal. Uh, yeah, we'll do that, sure. I don't have any Wi-Fi on here. I didn't buy the Wi-Fi motherboard because Wi-Fi is something where, you know, Wi-Fi 6 is here. Uh, erase disk. Yeah, that's fine. Sabrent Rocket. 
This installer is so much better. The first time I installed Linux years ago, it was all in the terminal, and it's still like that sometimes on, on some distributions. Uh, continue. Uh, the graphical installer in Ubuntu is one of the reasons I chose Ubuntu instead of uh, one of the other distributions, just because I know it's pretty darn solid at this point. My name, Jeff Gearling. Uh, what should we name it? Let's see. Yeah, the animal wallpapers are kind of annoying, but uh, okay. Uh, let me switch off of this so that you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm sure somebody has a, uh, what is it called? I'm sure somebody has a an AI that can listen to the key presses there and get my password out of it, but uh, what should we call it? Let's see. <laughs> Ubuntu PC. Hunter 12 for the password. Uh, it was, it's actually Hunter 13. It's much more secure. I'll call it Ubuntu PC. Whoops. PC. That's fine. All right. It's installing. All right. Well, let's see. Not a Raspberry Pi. Not a Pi PC. Yeah, Ubuntu PC is fine. I'm not too sentimental about names. <clears throat> Let me see if there's any super chats I've missed while it's installing here. Oh, um, <clears throat> so I see there are super chats. I don't know what the messages were in them. But I guess thank you to Afraid Fruit 6218, S Wicked 86, Rogue Thinker. Yuval Kaplan, Wim Nano, and Alexander Swenson. If you have your messages in there, you can type them in again and I'll try to get to them. But uh, yeah, sorry about that. Jacob, I could call it Marco. No, I'm not going to name it Marco. It's done. It's not done yet. It's still going. I can see it right here. Oh, yeah. Well, I already named it, so you don't have to keep keep doing that. I can change the name later. That's true. Uh, yes, I. So I actually reset the motherboard. I think accidentally when I was trying to update the BIOS to see if it worked without a CPU in it a week or two ago. So I'm I'm just happy that the motherboard actually works still. Um, yeah. Well, it's going to install fast because I'm running it on a Sabrent Rocket Q. It's you know pretty fast. Uh, the USB is UEFI. 2004 Focal Fossa, yes, it's Ubuntu 2004. The reason I chose Ubuntu, I'll mention that while it's finishing up, is uh, I know that things should just work in Ubuntu most most of the time. Um, the interface all pretty much works out of the box. I've used it before in some of my testing. The last PC that I actually ran for myself, I ran Fedora. So um, restart now. So this time I'm doing Ubuntu mostly because so since this is technically a gaming build, I wanted to uh, not have to do a whole lot of work to get um, games to run on it. And Ubuntu and Pop! OS and Steam! OS and all that are kind of in the same vein. Although I think, isn't Steam, is Steam! OS based on Arch? I think so. Yeah, older-ish graphics drivers. I might need to update the graphics drivers at some point. Yeah, I do have CMOS. I, I actually put a new CMOS battery in whenever I get a new motherboard. Um, not for PCs, but I do get ones for Pis a lot. I always pop out any of the CMOS battery in there, check the voltage. If it's good, I'll pop it back in. Otherwise, I have a pile of them. Oh, I need to log in. So let's do that. Diet Dr. Pepper. If they want to sponsor me, I'd be happy for that. <coughs> You don't need G Fuel or energy drinks when you have Diet Dr. Pepper. Okay, I don't want anything on mine. I don't want Live Patch right now, at least. No, don't send me. Don't send the system info. Location services, not right now. Probably never. I don't know why they have all this, but I'm just. I just want to use it. Okay. So the first couple things I want to do is run a couple benchmarks to see if this PC is operating as it should. 
I also want to get open RGB on here. But uh, uh, what should I do first? In chat, what do you think? Open RGB or run some benchmarks? Yeah, I, someone mentioned uh, Mac OS. Like, I, I do, I mean, that's the reason why I still use a Mac for 90% of my stuff. I use it for video editing and photos and most of my sysadmin work, I do it through my Mac because it, it's a BSD-like operating system. But it, it, everything just works most of the time. It locks up, but it's better at least than a lot of other distributions that have weird issues when you try just doing almost anything. Uh, 20 megabytes, yeah, whatever, I'll let that download. So what do people say? Should I do update first? Yeah, it's doing that now. <laughs> Change the theme. I'll leave the theme for now. I'm, I'm not going to spend time on that. I was going to try to find a red shirt Jeff image that I could pop in there. Okay, benchmarks take time, so I should do open RGB first. So let's do that. Okay. Hopefully nobody has their AI algorithm trained on that. Oh, that didn't work. Hopefully you cannot see my... I don't think it's... The pixels are small enough that AI could not discern which keys I was pressing there. Hopefully. Although I'm sure somebody has something that's fast enough to do that. I have no idea if it did the updates or not. I'm going to say it did. Oh, it's doing it right now. I don't know why that went away when it started updating. <clears throat> huh, this is just a front end to the app. That's funny. Snaps. I don't want snaps. I'll restart later and do open RGB really quick. <clears throat> I'm going to, sorry that the angle will be showing a little light in the view, but you can see everything on here. Fire starts here. I don't understand that, but whatever. I mean, it's nice that they have fan pictures in here, but uh, let's see. I don't need the privacy notice. OpenRGB.org. Dot org or dot com? Dot org. All right. Releases. <coughs> uh, I don't know. What should I do? I just I'll just do the deb. Maybe. Well, that's Debian. Uh, what's an app image? I just, I like using system packages or Docker containers. I don't know what an app image is, but I'll, I'll try this. I'm guessing it's some sort of new flat pack snap whatever thing that, no, I don't know. What are people saying? <clears throat> Get the deb. Okay, I'll just do that because I actually know how deb files work and how to install them. I'll just use the software installer. I won't use GW or whatever. Okay. It didn't open automatically. I told it to, but maybe it is. I don't know. Is there a, I haven't used Ubuntu in like two or three years. Is there a task manager type thing that I can do? Someone mentioned that in there. Certain things work better with the image. Failed to install file not supported. Okay. Uh, is OpenRGB in here then? No. Okay. So we'll try we'll try the alternate way. There's no terminal here. How do I get to terminal? This is ridiculous. Terminal should always be one of the sidebar things. Says the Mac user. Uh, add to favorites. Okay. Let's see. Debbie, not Debbie. Okay. Uh, where did it see downloads? Okay. Uh, but I want the dub. Ah. Save file. I think it downloaded. Okay. All right. Pseudo GW. And then what is this called? Open. That's an interesting thing. This not that amp image. No, what the heck? Deb, silly thing. What? What is it called? Oh, it's lowercase. Open RGB. Yes, I want to install it. Okay, is it in here now? 
open RGB. There it is. All right, now let's let me. Uh, okay. Resizable zones. Number of LEDs. I have no idea how many LEDs there are, but uh, what does this say? Check this link. That doesn't work. Copy location, paste. Okay, so let's see. Um, so this is interesting. Does anybody have a... I haven't reboot yet. No, I haven't. I, I will reboot, don't worry. Okay, four, four pin doesn't need this. Okay, that's fine. Uh, save and close. Okay, so all zones, mode. I just want to do rainbow for now, whatever. I don't know how, so. Uh, static. Oh, now they're off. Color cycle. Okay. But the RAM is not showing up. I'll have to figure that out later. I don't want to do that in here. All right, so it's doing some sort of color cycle-y thing, rainbow-y, whatever. That's fine. Uh, save as PC Happy RGB. Sure, we'll call it that. And you can see that on this camera. Yeah, see? It's changing colors. These are not doing the same thing, so apparently I'll have to figure out how to get those into OpenRGB. But here's the front of the case too, see? Amazing. RGB, the kids will like it. They might be watching the stream, I'm not sure. All right, so if I close this, it still works, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me reboot. I'll just do it in here. I'm gonna reboot and switch back to the PC. We'll see how Ubuntu boots up and we'll get to benchmarking. What time is it? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. I'm still streaming, right? Why not Pop OS? Mostly because I'm going to game on it, but I'm also going to do a lot of other things on it. The thing that I will probably do most on it is rebuild the Linux kernel over and over and over again while I'm trying to get the Raspberry Pi to work with a graphics card. Yeah. If there's one thing that you can do to uh, to get to spark off a lot of discussion in the YouTube chat is mention anything about any Linux distro. And then, of course, everybody has to tell you why their distro is the best distro. For me, I usually use whatever distro causes the least pain, which is a lot of times not the distro that someone else recommends. For example, Ubuntu causes me the least pain a lot of times when I'm doing some testing and things. I run Debian on servers mostly. I run PyOS on Pies. And I usually run whatever distribution people recommend uh, if I need it. Okay, so for Onyx, we're going to download for Onyx Test Suite. Uh, I'll tell you more about this in a second once I get to it. Oh, I could have just clicked download there. Download. I'll do the package. Save file because obviously the software install application doesn't do anything useful. And now I have terminal in my shortcuts, which means... I can actually get to it quickly. I'm sure there's, is there, that does that. Is there a way? I don't know how to bring up this, this menu, like with the keyboard shortcut. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Like I said, Mac user, I'm just used to command spacebar. That's how I use my computer. All right, um, so I want to install it. So CD downloads and Pharonix is there. So sudo gdebi Onyx test suite. The fans, the fans are back to orange. They didn't automatically switch back to rainbow mode. Yes. So let's get back to that. Open RGB. Apparently only have to click once. Mode. Color cycle. I don't know why that, that went away. I, this looks like something's messed up here because OpenRGB is not working. Well, it is color cycling, so we'll just leave it on that. Okay, so we got we got Phronix installed. 
So I'll, I'll turn around and talk to you for a minute about Pharonix here. Uh, so Pharonix is, um, it, it, it's run by Michael Larabel, I think is his name. I don't remember. I'm just running off memory here. Uh, but I've used it for a lot of Pi benchmarking and for a lot of other benchmarking. And it also is tied into openbenchmarking.org. So the cool thing about Pharonix is it has, uh, I think hundreds, not thousands, hundreds of different benchmarks that are pretty common and used for many years. So you can compare different generations of CPUs, GPUs, RAM, hard drives, everything. And there's thousands and thousands of systems compared. Um, and I like it because it uses a lot of Linux tools and works on Linux great. I think you can run it on Mac and, and Windows too, but it's mostly Linux users would use it. Uh, but if you want to find out a ton more about it, there's a video that has, uh, I think, the best one on Pharonix in general by uh, Linux for Everyone. I don't know if I linked to it in the description, but I'll have to remember to do that at some point. Um, but yeah, and there's other ways to benchmark Linux and gaming on Linux as well, but there's my little spiel on Pharonix and why I'm using it. Uh, it just works. That's the main thing. Let's switch back to here. And uh, so there's a few different ones I wanted to do. The first one is... Let's just see um, system info to see if it sees all of the stuff on the system correctly. Let me make this font bigger. How do I do that? Is there preferences in this terminal? Advanced. Nope, not that. I'm going to do preferences. Font size, font size, font size. Profiles. That doesn't do anything. Dark. Okay. How do I... Oh, here we go. Font size. I can't change. Oh, I have to check that. That's annoying. Even Raspberry Pi's terminal is easier than this. All right. Oh, now it's full screen or something. All right, whatever. All right, so it's seeing, it's seeing the Ryzen 5 5600 6 cores, all those features, Zen 3 architecture, 1920 by 1080. BIOS version is 10, so that's why this, this uh, CPU is working. 15, I think, is the latest, so I'll have to update that later. No, oh, it is seeing, it's already seeing both of these, so that's cool. So it is seeing, let, let me try that really quick. Uh, let me do a new, new window here. And I need to turn my I need to set my Mac over here uh, to be a iPerf3 server so I can test the bandwidth between those two. So let me go to it really quick. Uh, it's not, I'm not seeing it. Hold on a second. GPU not detected. Should be. I'm going through the GPU right now. Let me run into my office really quick. I'm literally running. Because it's very boring seeing nothing on the computer. Uh, oh, that's because the computer was asleep. And the keyboard's not working either. Okay. See, this is why I'm a Mac user. Because sometimes the Mac works. All right. Apparently, my Mac had restarted tonight. I did not know that. And here I am talking to myself having no clue how the stream's going because I'm like 50 feet away from it now. All I want to do is test iperf. Okay, iperf 3-s. Okay, my Mac is listening. And I'm coming back over to the PC. Okay, and I'm going to say sudo, nope, sudo apt install iperf3. So this is this is a uh, application that will test the bandwidth, the TCP bandwidth between two computers on a network. So I'm going to say iperf3-c. This is my max, so I should be getting 10 gigabits, and it looks like I am, so that's cool. So out of the box, everything worked, which is another reason why I chose Ubuntu for this. Um, I've had a lot of good luck with all drivers working right out of the box with it, which it seems to be. Now, someone said that the graphics card was not, it just says screen 1920 by 1080. Is there, in chat, is there something else I need to do in, in uh, 
No, I don't wear New Balance. I wear Asics. Yes. No, I, I know some people hate Ubuntu, but whatever. Ubuntu is fine. Uh, so the fun thing is uh, this monitor is a 144 hertz. I think it's FreeSync. I don't remember. Um, but the point is I'm running through an HDMI, uh, what is it called? An HDMI splitter so that you can see this on the stream and I can see it on the monitor. So it's not going to get this full performance because it's actually going, I think the monitor syncs up to the card through this particular um, splitter that I'm using. Um, but it, it does look like something's missing in terms of the screen. We'll see that in the C, in the GPU benchmark soon. Uh, but first, I want to run Veronics, Veronics Test Suite uh, Benchmark PTS X264. The reason I'll do this, I'll get to soon. Uh, let's see, it's installing some things. The reason I'm using uh, X264, I mean, you can compare it to other 5600s on the market and it looks like the average should be around 93 frames per second for this processor. Uh, but I run this test on all the Raspberry Pis just to get a quick CPU um, benchmark on them. And on the Raspberry Pi, uh, the best I've ever gotten is 5.7 frames per second. So if this thing can do better than that, then uh, we'll know it's a, at least a, a partial success so far. 15 minute estimated download time? You gotta be kidding. I mean, I know, I know I don't get a full 10 gigabits on the internet connection. That would be nice, but it shouldn't be 15 minutes. It's only 640 megabytes. Ah, only. Okay. Uh, yes, and benchmarks do take a little more time. Where are snaps less secure? I, I don't like snaps as much because it's like, I don't know, it's just the vibe of the way that they've been developed and are being used is a little weirder. I, I'm a Debian guy mostly, and in Debian, there's a lot more uh, there's a lot more suspicion around a lot of other packaging methods. And I mean, even in Debian, I think sometimes people are a little too strict with things. Let's see test results. Would I like to save them? Yeah, no, not right now. I just want to see them. CPU scaling governor is not set to performance. Yeah. We'll see what it does without that. I'm just using the faults here. I can tune things later. The vibe is off. Yes. Somebody made a vibe OS. So we could get it. So it should only do three runs. And it should be a lot faster than a Raspberry Pi. So again, I said the Raspberry Pi does, what, 5.7 frames per second was the best I ever got on a Raspberry Pi 4. And when you're building a gaming PC, the Raspberry Pi 4 is not a target that you care too much about, but this one is 99.86. Uh, so I did better than the average on openbenchmarking.org without even trying. So that's cool. No overclock or anything. All right. So another one I wanted to try is PTS slash uni, uni, how do you spell it? Unigen, nah, unigen heaven. 1.6.4. Now, I don't know if this will run correctly or not out of the box. We'll see. It's basically going to run a, a graphics test. Uh, resolution will do 4, 1920 by 1080. Uh, full screen. Save test results? No. Okay. So it started the run. Here it goes. Let's see how it works. I can hear the fan cranking up a little bit. So that's probably a good sign. Probably. Is it supposed to take this long to load? Oh, here it goes. Something's happening. Oh boy. That does not look good. I think that we're not using the G the graphics card. <laughs> I think this is rendering completely on the, the CPU. Because that does not look like what, uh, what I've seen before from anyone that has a PC that actually can run this. I think the Raspberry Pi can almost do that kind of performance. <laughs> what do people say in live chat about this? 
Yeah, well, there is no iGPU on this chip. It's a 5600X. It's just like doing CPU rendering somehow. The RAM is at 3200. Yeah, so the driver is definitely... It's a power point. Uh, I, I, no, I'm not plugged into the motherboard output, and there is no iGPU on this chip. It's a 5600X. Um, NDD15 cooler. Yeah, I mean, at some point I might upgrade the cooler, but it's it's working okay. Yeah, we're we're going to get to curl compiling. <laughs> oh, gosh. And you guys might think that the stream, like, look at me. I'm moving, and I'm still 60 frames per second. So this is definitely not... Uh, we're definitely not going through the graphics card. Either that or somebody uh, hacked this graphics card and that's why I got it for 500 bucks and it has like a, a Rage Pro 128 in it or something. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cancel this. It's obviously, I don't know if I can cancel it. Okay, I wanna quit. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna quit that. Yeah, that's, we're not, yes, quit. Yeah, we're not gonna keep watching this. This is painful. Okay. All right. Yeah, that didn't work. Uh, so drivers, let's look for uh, RX 60 XT Ubuntu driver. Yeah. Oh, we'll just grab it from AMD. I could get it through Linux kernel or something too, but I'm just going to do it here. All right. Okay. Uh, look at doc slash index. Refer to the installation instructions. Installing for Ubuntu. All right, well, we'll just do their directions here. Uh, did it not download? How do I switch? Oh, apparently it's a relatively large, 14 megabytes per second. It should be faster than that, but I guess maybe their download server's a little slow. I have terrible upload speeds for my internet, but I do have usually 700 to 900 megabits down. We're getting there. I told it to open with the archiver, the unarchiver, so it, hopefully it will. I can extract it right into downloads, all files. Uh, AMD GPU. I'll just do that. Extract. Show the files. Okay, so we're in here. So go into the downloads. Okay. Oh, I forgot. You have to right click and paste. I think, uh, yeah, whatever. AMD GPU install. Uh, can I just run that? Why can't I just run that? Let me just try this. Oops. Yeah, uh, that seems like it would be more useful. <laughs> Control Shift V, yeah. Someone stop this man. Uh oh. Well, we'll see. I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll let it do this and see what happens. I was trying these drivers and the uh, in kernel drivers for the Raspberry Pi, and we'll see what happens here. Let Jeff learn. See, so this. This is the other thing I, I said before, like all these other PC build streamers, you build a PC and then you don't show the like 12 hours of learning that you do afterwards. So it's not very helpful to people watching the stream. It's like, yeah, if anybody can put Legos together. I mean, if you drop things enough, then they don't work anymore. But it's fun to see, uh, to see what you accidentally break when you do things like this. <clears throat> like if you're a new Linux user, you're not going to be like, oh, you know, package driver versus the kernel source compile versus the driver from the vendor's website. You're just going to go on Google and search for how do I get my AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT working with my 
new computer and then you're going to end up on this page and you're going to download this thing and it's going to have 16,000 files in it and you're just going to do whatever you hope. Of course, I, I pulled an audible there and I just ran their little installer, which will probably blow up in my face, but we'll see. Oh, an error code. How nice. All right, so we're not going to do that. Someone said, just use the system package manager. We'll see. We'll see. What is it? Package? No. Is it this? This little app thingy? What are people saying? Da, 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 da. Okay, let's search for... There, is there a search? Can I search? Oh, it's this little itty bitty thing up there. Search for AMD. Yeah? Yes? It, it might not be fun. I wouldn't call it fun necessarily. Click on updates. Oh gosh, I don't know what any of that stuff means. What is updates? Core 20. I don't know what core 20 is. Uh, I'll update it. I don't know what that means. What do people say? If you updated your package, you might have the drivers. Okay, well, we'll see. AMD GPU uninstall first. Yeah. I don't think there is an uninstall. Okay, get out of full screen mode. I don't know if that if this is finished. There's there's literally a line right here now. And there's still a one by this updates. Oh, now the one is gone, but this is empty. So maybe that worked. So you know earlier how I was saying that I use Ubuntu sometimes because it just kind of works? You might want to scratch that and say something else. All right, so we're not going to do this. Is there anything else on Google that says like, yeah, how do you actually do this? I ran that update. sudo apt update, and we'll do an upgrade too. So GTK, but I don't see anything about AMD drivers in here. Search for drivers on launcher. I did software and updates. I don't know. Look, here's this thing. This looks like the software thing, Ubuntu software. Yeah. Updates, nothing. I mean, I'll reboot again. But someone said drivers. Drivers. Uh, bold of you to assume that, assume that things work. Out of the box. Software and updates in the launcher. Software and updates. Oh, this is installed. Okay. Additional drivers. Eh, I'm not going to touch that yet. Someone said go to the launcher. I'm guessing this is the launcher, even though it says show applications. And if I go to software and so there's software update, Ubuntu software, and software and updates. All right. So another reason why I use Mac OS. There's not any of this tomfoolery. Let's see. <clears throat> when you're in the GUI, it, no, I should say I use, I use these things for headless servers all the time. And on the command line, it's a lot simpler in my mind. This stuff starts getting really confusing. I just want to get a graphics card driver. Uh, so other software. Additional drivers. So... AMD GPU isn't a proprietary driver, I don't think. No additional drivers are available. So, eh. do I need canonical partners? What are people saying? Additional drivers. Yeah, I see that. It's empty. I don't know why I would need that for AMD, though. Those GPU drivers should be in there. Probably non free. All right, let's check here. It has proprietary and it has community and it has multiverse. So do I need canonical partners? Synaptic? Well, that's for mice and stuff. Canonical partners? Okay, I'll try that. Oh gosh. 
If I were doing this on the command line, I think we would have already been here. But I'm trying to do this in a way that people can see it visually. What are people saying? Uh, okay, someone says one command on the console can fix it. Oh, I don't have build essentials installed. Information is out of date. Okay, well, we'll just do this. I'll let this go and then we'll try um, installing build essentials. I didn't look too closely at the error message back here. Uh, where was I? Uh, AMD GPU. So if I do that again, it should just pop in here. Uh, fully uninstall AMD GPU uninstall. Probably need to do that. All right, we're just going to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the problem is I am running 2004, which is an older kernel and might not have the drivers for the 6700 XT. So I'm going to try doing a, a build essential. It is installed. So if I do this again, why won't it work? That's the question. You would think that this should work. It's also following the directions on AMD's documentation. If I go into here, where was it? Doc index.html. <laughs> it's the same thing here. So using the script, return an error code. Uh, this is not configured yet. Crash. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to go, what was the error? Bad return status. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, you know what? Right now I'm just going to I'm just going to make a new terminal window and we're going to do some other benchmarks. Uh, we'll get back to that. Um, I want to see how fast, I mean, the, the main thing for this, besides gaming at some point when I can get the, the graphics card driver working, is I want to, uh, I don't need to do that, Pharonix benchmark. I want to use this as uh, ETS slash build Linux. I want to use this as a uh, <clears throat> as a Linux kernel build machine, and my hope, and I believe that this will be true, is that this machine will be faster than my Mac Mini M1, which can rebuild, it can cross compile the Linux kernel in. Hold on. It can cross compile the Linux kernel in how long? Uh, nine minutes, nine and a half minutes, something like that. So if this could do it in like three minutes or two minutes, or overclocked maybe even faster. That would be very nice because when I'm doing my GPU work and I'm rebuilding the kernel like 100 times, uh, then I could have it done on this machine. And first, my Mac doesn't have to have its processors going 100% that whole time, so I can still do other stuff. And second, I can have faster tech time or uh, rebuild times. The full cycle of testing can be a lot faster. Uh, what does this say? Uh, I'm just going to do def config for now because I don't want it to take forever. Uh, no, I won't want to save the test results. Let's make this a bit bigger. Okay. Yeah, the CPU governor, whatever. I'm just using defaults for this. What are people saying here? It took me a week to get the graphics working on my R uh, on my ROG Zephyrus. Yeah. I that, I mean, it is, it is a huge, uh, it is a huge difference. If you're coming from the world of Macs where, you know, Apple only has to support three or four different generations, yeah, five or six probably, 
of uh, video drivers and things, Apple can do a pretty decent job. And I've never in my life been like, oh, the GPU's not working. Because especially with the M1 and M M1 Pro and all that, it's baked in. Like you can't choose other GPUs. I would like there to be an option for other ones and you could finagle with drivers yourself. But like the driver that's built into the system always works. Uh, that is something that, you know, that's a reason why for the professional work that I do, making videos and editing photos and working on website development and, and doing my sysadmin type work, like I want a computer that I can just, if, if it breaks, I can go to the store, buy another one and be back up and running same day, usually within one or two hours because I have everything automated with Ansible. Uh, but that's not always the case. Like if you're going to build PCs for yourself and like if this whole PC dies, first of all, I can't get a graphics card. So I'll have to get a, a, a CPU with the, the iGPU, so an APU. Um, and you have to build things yourself and, you, you know, the driver support is all over the board. Even with Windows, that can be an issue. Windows sometimes is better and has quicker support for things. Um, do not reboot. Reboot. Wait, was it finished? No, right now it's, uh, what is this called? It's running a, a benchmark. Is there a task manager in here? Activity. This is messing up the result system monitor. Let's see what we're doing. This is one thing that I'm usually jealous of Windows for. Windows has the nicest looking task manager system. Okay, so we're getting 100%. That's good. On all cores, too. Uh, is anybody saying anything? This is the latest stable. This is Ubuntu 2004. Yeah, HTOP is nice too. And there's top, but sure. Does HTOP show all the all the threads? If I go over to uh, where's this HTOP? Oh, it's not installed. I'm not going to do it right now to mess up the benchmark. Top, I don't think, shows threads. It just throw, just shows what's in top. But uh, HTOP, I don't know. If, I guess it shows all threads in the little graph. And, of course, doing other things on the system does influence the benchmark results. But uh, how long did this take? So 1234. So it looks like it's going to be way faster. Of course, this is just the def config. And it doesn't include all modules. So the actual build that I do for, for Raspberry Pi might be a little bit different. So I'll have to do that later on sometime. <laughs> yes. System monitor th shows threads, does it? I, whoops. Let me check. So there should be six cores and six, uh, 12 threads. So yeah, it's shown each thread, I guess. Is it finished? Because a lot of the cores have... Okay, yeah, it just finished. All right, and it'll do its third run here, and then it'll give us a score. So looking at uh, Pharonix results for the 5600S, uh, 5600X, sorry, it looks like the average was 112 seconds. So if we did 34 to 36... Uh, it could be close. We'll see. We'll see if I can get close to the average for the 5600X. With the stock cooler, no overclock, of course. <laughs> get a snack. It's lunchtime. Do release upgrade. Yeah. Install Manjaro. Ah, yeah. I thought that I would be all in the clear with the Ubuntu 2004. I mean, this 2004 was released before the RX 6700 XT came out. So I'm guessing that that has something to do with it. But I would imagine, I mean, I was reading on uh, Ubuntu's site even. They said like, oh, the LTS will be the most stable build for any modern computer, blah, blah, blah. But uh, 2104 might have the driver in it. And yeah, I mean, if I install the bleeding edge, then yeah, I'm going to have it. But I, 
I usually pick, L I mean, maybe it's my server mentality and my stability. Like I usually pick an OS that I feel is going to be a stable experience and I don't have to upgrade it every year. But uh, that is that is a server mentality and not a gaming PC mentality. And that might be my problem. Here we go. So 107. So again, I'm I'm above, I'm, I'm faster than the average for the 5600X on openbenchmarking.org. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean, maybe I got blessed with better silicon than other people did. Um, I was going to check the, uh, uh, the storage speed as well really quick. So I think that this test should run pretty quickly. FIO, using uh, FIO, which is a pretty standard way to benchmark uh, storage performance in Linux. And it's going to install that and run it. And then I will, I'll reboot again, and I mean, we could do a release upgrade, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, but I, I mean, so far I'm happy. I will reboot, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't upgrade it unless it's security. I mean, I, I keep, I have automatic updates on all my servers, so I, I keep it updated, but I don't upgrade releases. I stay on long-term stable releases. So, like, I'm on Debian, I'm still on Debian 10 on a lot of my Debian servers. I'm going to slowly upgrade them to Debian 11. Dist upgrade. All right. That was a good time to remind you to uh, hit like if you're still watching, because if you are still watching, you're a dedicated viewer, because I've seen a lot of people dropping off as we've had all these software issues. But again, I say like, I don't know, for me, this is when you learn a lot more. Uh, you learn a lot more when you have these problems, but the people who build PCs on live streams often end it once they get it to boot. And they already have a pre-set up thing that just has the game that they're going to benchmark and all that running on it. That's not as fun. Uh, let's see. I'll just do... Oh, shoot. I don't even remember which one is probably the most useful for this. This might take forever. Uh, what? Yes? No. <laughs> I did... Yes. No? Yes. I... Oh, shoot. Let's just do, oh, let's just do 512K, or uh, we'll do one megabyte for now. I don't want to spend 30 minutes on these. No. 40, okay, we're not going to do this whole thing, but yeah, forget that. I'll do storage testing later. I know that the, the, um, the drive should do at least a few hundred megabytes random uh, small file, and at least like a couple gigs large file. We don't have to test that, but I will do... Uh, I don't have the graphics card working. Okay, so everybody's saying I should reboot. We're gonna do we're gonna do sudo apt update. Um, we'll do a dist upgrade. Two not fully installed. Oh, that's probably AMD GPU. <laughs> Oops. Let's see what happens if I try this again. This might actually work. We'll see. If you build a gaming PC, you install Windows. I, I don't install Windows. That's the problem there. Uh, okay, still has this error. Uh, not configured up. Bad return status. All right, so I'm going to say sudo reboot. We'll try it again. Do release upgrade. Yeah, I don't need snacks right now. Snacks are for the week. I just need some Diet Dr. Pepper. They're not sponsoring me, but if they ever wanted to sponsor me, I would take it. Send me a lot of free Diet Dr. Pepper. All right, back to the PC. I'm kind of surprised my kids aren't back yet. They went out, uh, I think they're getting some groceries and things. Not the kids by themselves. The mother is with them, of course. Hey, a printer. What? And why is the screen all of a sudden, like, 480p? That's not right. So either something went well, or <laughs> printer's here. So, so the printer is here, but... Uh, but my graphics went to trash. Uh, let's see. Let's see if uh, we're seeing anything better. Chronix system. If 
graphics. Oh, there's more graphics information. Uh, but why is my screen like 480p? Oh, it's 1024. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> okay, I'm going to unplug it and plug it in and see if we... That could be... I mean, I am running through that uh, HDMI splitter. But yeah, that's that's not right. Something is wrong there. Let's try this again. Uh, let's just do this again. See if it fails the same way again. Not enough thermal paste, yes. Ooh, thank you for the uh, funding my Diet Dr. Pepper habit, Mike. Half installed driver, reboot again. Wait, what? Why do I need to reboot twice? It's trying this again. You're saying do release upgrade. I'll try it. I'll try to upgrade to the latest release. We'll see what happens. We'll see if this succeeds. If it doesn't, which I don't believe it will, I'll do do release upgrade and see what happens. I am amazed that the batteries on my lights and on my camera are still all working. That is crazy. How is the battery on here? Let's see. Ooh, 20%. Yeah, we're not going to be able to stream through the night, that's for sure. Hey, if you want me to upgrade my equipment and get cameras that can be powered from wall power, uh, my Patreon and my GitHub sponsors are linked below. All right. I don't think this will work either. It's easier for you to read things, but it's a little stretched out. Do release, wait, what? Why can't I do release upgrade? Is it just do release upgrade? Okay. Uh, okay, set prompt equals normal. Copy. Uh, shift control V. It's weird that you have to use three keys to press control V. Uh, prompt equals normal. Hopefully this is fast. Oh, shoot. Eh. I don't know what I just did. X. All right, we'll see what it says. Because I do want to run some graphics on here. Oh, AMD GPU uninstall. I tried that. It didn't work. Maybe. Here, let me control C out of here. Ah. AMD GPU uninstall. Oh, maybe it will work. Okay, sorry. I did it, and then I undid it, so I had to redo it. Okay, let's try this again. It is safer to do that, and I'll probably reflash. I'll probably re uh, reformat everything completely once I actually get this. Yes, I did just nano a file. I use Vim sometimes, but nano is usually a little quicker, and I have the keyboard shortcuts memorized for both of them, so I don't know. My brain, my brain uses Vim usually when I'm SSH'd into a server, and then Nano if I'm on the server. I have no idea why. But I use Sublime Text 4. I don't remember what the newest version is on my Mac. Been a Sublime user ever since TextMate uh, kind of went away for a while, and then TextMate came back, and it's open source now, but I still use Sublime. Why? I don't know what this says, but I'm going to do it. Lock screen is disabled. Okay. Fine by me. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, if I'm if I'm editing a web application or something, I'm not going to be using Nano for that. That's insane. Nano is great for just. There's the config file. It has 40 lines in it. Open up a Nano. And Nano has enough keyboard shortcuts to do most of the quick editing that I need to do. All right, let's let that go for a second and I'll grab a drink of water. I'll switch back to this so you can see that beautiful RGB lighting that I really don't care about. You know, it's funny, this, this graphics card is pretty worthless. It just does red, that's all. I mean, it can't do RGB. So don't get that like five horsepower boost. Yeah, don't need the extra drivers on 21, 
that 10, hopefully. Everybody's saying this. I, we'll see if it actually works. I was going to end the stream soon, but I was hoping to at least get the graphics card working before I do that. We'll see. What is the, what is the screen saying right now? Processing triggers. It, red is fine for Team Red, and I could switch open RGB back to just all red, but I one thing that I haven't gotten working is these uh, RAM slots for some reason aren't showing up by default in open RGB. Oh, what is this? Mail server configuration. I don't need a mail server on this thing. Uh, okay. Uh, no, local only. Oh, you got to be kidding. I don't really care. I don't know why it has a mail, I, I guess, because it, I don't know. If it's Ubuntu server, I can understand it. For a desktop environment, why does it need to be running postfix or send mail or whatever? All right. Here. While it's doing that, I'll give you a close-up of the fancy RGB. Oh, that's very bright. Let's turn that down. I can't turn it down. How do I turn it down? No, that way. There you go. Look at that beautiful, fancy RGB. And then the boring red of the Radeon. The funny thing is, like, on the camera, that shows up as kind of an orangey red, but it is pretty red in real life, so I don't know why that is. I mean, color balance, of course, but even on the other camera, which is color white balance, I guess the LEDs in here are probably not, uh, like, true... True color. Anyway, fancy. Unbelievable. Never seen anything like it. Why did my exposure just get messed up again? All right, I don't know. I'm a, oh, shoot. I've never used this app before. Uh, what is it called? OBS? Oh, oh. How do I turn this off? <laughs> shoot. I don't, know how to I don't know how to turn off the manual exposure. There we go. Okay. Anyway, this is uh, OBS camera for iOS. Let's me have... A remote camera. There's my, there's my chemicals. Uh, my shelf of chemicals that there's literally nowhere else that I have to put them in here, so I just kind of stick them there, and they've been there since I <laughs> redid my workshop. And uh, now you get to see them. I I didn't mean to feature them, but there they are. Mesa was installed. Everybody's talking about Mesa. It, it was installed as part of the AMD GPU dra graphics driver, it looked like. I don't know. Let's see. Ubuntu is dead now. I don't know if I'd call it dead now. Let's see. Any other super chats? Remember that the secret to success is that you have to be 10% smarter than the machinery you're trying to operate. I'm on the bleeding edge of that right now. I think I'm on about 9%. Have you tried Pop OS or Manjaro? I have not tried Pop. I maybe I should have for this, because Pop is it isn't Pop based on Ubuntu except it's like a little bit more built for out of the box. I th I think it I don't remember which PC manufacturer actually runs Pop OS, but yeah, maybe I should have had uh, uh, phone a friend on here and had like Anthony from LTT or something, if he would listen to me. Uh, anything else? Play Halo on the stream sometime? I might, someday. I Actually, the first time I did a streaming video with uh, some of the hardware that I bought for streaming was to play Halo 3, a part of the Master Chief Collection, but it was a terrible... The, the computer I was... This was the computer I was running that on. This guy, right here, which is a Core i3 with integrated graphics. I could only do, like, 720p, and it was... All the options were off, so it didn't look amazing. So I might, uh, I might stream again. Oh, that's the wrong camera. There's my chemicals again. You got your TSP up there and your PB blaster. There we go, PC. Pop is very friendly. Yes, uh, uh, review of the Raspberry Pi keyboard for gaming. Yeah, my review is they are terrible for that. A funny thing is on this keyboard, um, I've noticed that the this shift key, for some reason on every Pi keyboard I've used, this shift key doesn't have a whole lot of accuracy like you have to press it in the middle and hard for it to work and I the way I type I, I type on a, a Mac keyboard and mouse uh, the, the Apple magic one or whatever I just like the typing feel on it um, and I, I very lightly hit shift so on this one I'm always missing caps and uh, if you ever need to use shift 
that's the hardest thing. The other thing that I don't like is control and function should be flipped, I think. Control should be here. My muscle memory has it there. I don't know, maybe this is the Windows layout. There's control, function, Raspberry key, alt. Um, anyway, on the Mac, it's function, then control, option, command. Anyway, those are those are neither here nor there. It's it's an okay keyboard for just if you need a keyboard and it's cheap and it looks okay. The mouse is not too bad actually. The one complaint I have for gaming is it's a little spongy on the clicking, so I wouldn't I wouldn't use either for serious gaming. Is it still installing? Yeah. Updating database of manual pages. Yeah, it's gonna take a little while. Uh, what else? GPU pass through to VMs. I don't. I might do something like that at some point. I know. Um, so Craft Computing has a couple of good videos. Another guy named Jeff, worth worth the subscribe. I think uh, he he has a couple of videos where he's done that uh, using like splitting a GPU and, and using uh, um, multiple graphics cards for multiple VMs for multiple gamers at the same time. So that's kind of cool. Um, ZFS for storage. I just used Ubuntu's default for this. I don't know what Ubuntu chooses by default. I would imagine it's ext4. What am I going to use this for? <clears throat> As the title says, gaming and... Um, well, there's actually a few things. One is, immediately I'm going to be using it for kernel builds. As you can see, it's faster than my Mac for that. How much exactly, I don't know, because the, I didn't run the, the Pharonix benchmark on my Mac. I ran the Raspberry Pi kernel build, which probably has a few more modules in it, maybe a few less, I don't know. Um, so that, that's like nine minutes on my Mac. The def config kernel build on here was two or so minutes. So it was faster by a, a good margin, but I, I didn't do the full Pi kernel build. So we'll see how much faster that is. Um, yeah, I found a big Pi. The funny thing is the, the weight of that CPU is kind of crazy. Like if you pick up the CPU, it's like, it's like as heavy as a Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll also, I'm going to put Steam on here. I was thinking about doing it on the stream, but after this GPU stuff, I don't think it would work. Oh, what is it asking here? Um, it, it, we wouldn't have time today for that, unfortunately. Uh, I'll just install a package maintainer's version. Sure. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm, I'm going to put Steam on here and see how many games I can get to run on it. Well, the games that I run are usually older games like Quake 3 and Unreal and Portal and Team Fortress and older games that I, I still enjoy. I haven't played a whole lot of new games in the past few years. When you have kids, when you have multiple kids especially, uh, you don't have as much time to do regular gaming uh, I don't know, maybe someday when some of my kids are older, they might be interested in video games and we'd play a little bit together. But um, for now, I just, every once in a while, pick up a game. But I, I haven't gotten enough time to really get into any new games in the past few years. Uh, but I do want to try out, like I wanted to play Halo Infinite. Just because I'm a Halo nut, uh, I had played a lot of Halo in my college days. Um, but I, I found out that Halo Infinite does not work on Proton, so I might have to dual boot into Windows to run that on this computer. That'll be annoying, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> and then some other games that I would like to try someday, like Red Dead. Things like that. Um, anything else I'll do on it, though? I, I've considered putting some larger hard drives in it and having this be like a third local NAS. Basically have that 8 terabyte drive be the primary storage, which should be able to get the full 10 gigabits of bandwidth through to that drive and store things at a 10 gigabit rate, and then have, <clears throat> have like at least one hard drive as a backup and have active projects on it that are backed up on my, my other NAS. Um, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't like this case for hard drives all that much. Uh, removing can take several hours. I'm just not going to do that then. We don't have several hours here. Restart. Yes. Doing everything upside down. Yes. See you later, 2231 puppy. Everybody keeps talking about Snap. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll do a, a VM for Windows. Fingers crossed. Yes. We'll see if the 
the screen comes up at 1024 by 768 again. I don't even know, like, that's, that seems like it's some default somewhere. Like, that's like a, a 1990s default. I, I haven't seen a monitor with that resolution on it in many years. Okay, we're still at 1024 here. Yuck. Oh, but let's see if we see anything more. Uh, okay. No, oh, no, no. We're still seeing not that card. All right, so everybody is saying, oh, just upgrade and you'll get it. What the heck is that thing? Oh, that's, uh, I don't know. That is a, a scary looking image when you look at it head on and it's huge and it's stretched out like that. But let's see. Uh, what are people saying I should do at this point? Because I don't know if we're going to be able to get this uh, graphics card working on the stream before my camera dies. Lemur. That's what it is, a lemur. It, it doesn't look like a lemur. It looks like some very strange thing when, I'm, when you're looking at it this big in front of your face and it's stretched out like that. Um, I've broken my install. Yeah, well, I'll try to... F oh, what's... Uh, What's the problem? What's the problem you got? Report a problem. An internal error. Uh, crash. <laughs> Unreportable reason. Yeah, whatever. Here, I'll send it to them. But I, I uninstalled the AMD GPU thing, so... Uh, what does this say? Auto remove. Uh, we'll let them remove something really quick while we're sitting here. It should be pretty quick, actually. Uh, nuke it from orbit. Yeah. Uh, remove the. Yeah, I might. I might just go straight into the monitor. But I'd really like letting you guys see what I'm doing here. What does it say? Yeah, that's the only resolution that we're getting here. Okay, I'll. I'll switch back to here. I will plug the monitor straight into the PC. I mean, you know, it should work this way, but uh, might be the problem. All these cables are HDMI 2.0 certified and have been tested at 4K at 120. So I don't think it's the cables that could be the issue. And they were working at 1080p earlier. All right, we're plugged in. Display settings. Yeah, we're still not getting anything. It's not seeing the GPU. I, something messed up for sure. Let me... All right, I'm just going to go back to the other thing because it was working earlier before we tried installing. Before we tried doing that. Um... All right. Okay. You might have to end it without having a working graphics card, but you know what? What is a gaming PC without a graphics card? What did I just do? I just... Plugged. Oops. Okay. I'm having a USB moment plugging things back together. All right. What else do we got? Uh, rolling distro for gaming. Uh, I uninstalled Mesa AMD drivers, but should I try? Let's see. I'm sure chat will go crazy if I'm doing the wrong thing here. AMD. Oh, what is this thing here? An internal error. Uh, don't send. Hopefully it doesn't keep doing that. I'm going to try this again. This is what it says to do on their wiki. The Raspberry Pi keyboard is incompatible. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to try this again. If it doesn't work, then that's going to be it because the battery on that camera is about to die. Although I could do it without that camera. Oh, my, my phone's battery is getting a little sad right now, apparently, too. Yeah, either that or it's overheating or something. All right, let me switch back to PC screen so you can see.
Ubuntu driver tool again. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll do an uninstall on here. All right, I'm going to do that. And then you're saying go to this, what is it? Package. Pack system. No, software. It's not software updates, and it's not Ubuntu software. It's software and updates. And we got all this checked. Additional drivers. Let's see if it says anything here. No additional drivers available. I mean, you're seeing that, right? No additional drivers. And I just did this. So that's uninstalled again. Uh, maybe I messed myself up here, but why is it still showing 20.04? Aren't we? Uh, we're in 5.13. What are we saying? Capture screen is frozen. Shouldn't be. Oh, it is. What the heck? I think my laptop might be a little annoyed right now. Let me try uh, unplugging that and plugging it back in. Oop. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah. I think I might have to just reinstall and maybe I'll try Pop! OS or something. I don't know. My, my plan is, so, you know, we, we got most of the way there. We just didn't get the graphics card driver working. So it's not yet a gaming PC, unless you want to play Heaven like you saw earlier in the stream. But uh, yeah, so we got most things set up and working, and that's how Linux is a lot of times. You know, I spend two or three hours getting the simple thing working, and then but once you do it, you know your lessons, and then you, you do it better the next time. Uh, Fedora, yeah, I might try Fedora too. I mean, the, the nice thing is I can put whatever I want on here. It's easy enough. Um, I've never tried Linux Mint either, uh, but that, I mean, the PC works. Everything works. The, the graphics card works. It's just we don't have the drivers for it for some annoying reason or another. The 10 gigabits work. The CPU is running faster than the average CPU scores on uh, an open benchmarking, so that's already happy for me. I'm going to do some more work with uh, compiling the Raspberry Pi kernel on here. RGB kind of works. I don't know why those RAM modules didn't show up right away. I mean, the one thing that's annoying about the RAM modules, like I said earlier, they uh, they have proprietary uh, communications for the little EEPROM on them over SI squared C uh, to control the RGB on them. So it might be a case where I just need to install something or add something to open RGB and it should work. Uh, but everything's working. So, I mean, in general, I'm happy. I didn't check if both drives are recognized. LSBLK, oops. LSBLK. So we got SDA. Uh, oh, that's, that's the, I was like, this is not a 120 gig drive. Uh, SDB is eight terabytes and NVMe is eight terabytes. So both hard drives are here. They're both SSDs are here. So everything in that regard is working okay. And at this point, it's just a matter of getting the drivers maybe reinstalling Ubuntu or trying pop or something else. And what I'm planning on doing is I'll, I'll post a blog post with all this information because uh, for me, I don't really learn long-term lessons until I've redone something five or six times and then have the knowledge to be able to tell people exactly what happened. And this screw is stripped. So that's a fun thing. I'm going to have to retap that at some point. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll check my blog. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for watching the stream. And yes, you can give me an F in the chat. We almost got it to game. I was going to install a game on it and game on it, but uh, you know, we didn't get there next time. Um, but check my blog and subscribe. Subscribe to the second channel, Gearling Engineering. I have a box back there. I don't know if this camera's still working. There's my chemicals. There's a box back way back there. I don't know if you can see that box. Um, that box has a cool product that Marco, who's been watching the stream, helped me acquire that will help um, help my dad at his radio station significantly. And that video will be up on Gearling Engineering, which there's a link to that channel below. Thank you to everybody on Patreon and GitHub. Check out the blog. Uh, 
let me know. So one, one thing I did want to see is if you're interested, I don't know how, how interested people are. If you're interested in me exploring how the RGB on those RGB RAM sticks works, like how the actual protocol works with like open RGB or something else, I might be able to find a, a stick of RAM that's just the RGB and doesn't have the actual memory modules on it and explore that a little bit with like a Raspberry Pi Pico and see if we can control it. So if you're interested in that, um, pop in a comment and uh, hit, hit like on that comment if there already is one. And uh, that would be pretty fun to explore if we can use a Pico to control the RGB on the RGB RAM without a motherboard. Um, yeah, so, and like I said, I'll, I'll give you more updates on this. Obviously, we, uh, we, we, went, we actually we progressively got worse with the graphics on this computer. We went from having 1080p to having 1024 by 768. Um, yeah, and my blog is jeffgillian.com. I don't have a link on there. Sorry, I'll, I'll put a link in there. Uh, but since the battery is just about to die and since it's lunchtime and I have not had anything to eat, I'm going to go ahead and stop this stream. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. And it didn't end. I should actually hit the end button. <laughs> and I forgot. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.